the cat moved over. There's the fox. Come on, cat. Come on, cat. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Pharaohs. It's 7.20 a.m. and here's Stella. She's hanging out on my towel. I just got out of the shower a little while ago. Good morning, Stella. And last night, I woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning. I woke up out of a sound sleep because I heard the sound of a cat vomiting. Right, Stella? And it wasn't like a hacking hairball vomit kind of sound, like the loud sound. It was a very quiet pumping sound. And I don't know, I guess I've trained myself to just react to that sound, even to wake myself up out of a sound sleep. So I uh, jumped out of bed and I didn't realize that Simba and Stella were both sleeping on the bed. Um, so I knew it wasn't them. So I immediately thought it was Boo. But I checked Boo's room and Boo was sleeping on his day sofa. So I was like, okay, it's not Boo, it has to be Splash. So I put the lights on in the living room and Splash was just hanging out there. He was like looking at me. He was sitting on the rug. Then I was like, okay, well, where is it? So I had to look around first and then it looked like he vomited up a hairball with some food on top of it on the play rug and a little bit on one of those grass mats that the cats have. So I had to clean it up and then, you know, when cats vomit, it's usually not just in one place. It, there's usually a little bit somewhere else and sure enough I found that on the other rug. So I had to clean that up. It looks like Boo had a hairball within the past few days and Splash had a hairball within the past few days. So. Um, hopefully there won't be more within the next few days, right Stella? It is 7.52 a.m. and this is what happened last night. So, um, I heard some weird noises outside last night and I heard some raccoons chattering and at one point I thought, I hope they didn't break into the feeder. And look what happened, they broke into the feeder. So let's assess the damages. So they were able to move this heavy paver. They didn't pull it off, they just slid it over and they were able to lift this piece of wood up. Not only that, but look at this. They were able to get the top 
off of this unit and I don't even know what that plastic piece is. See this plastic piece? I don't even know what it is. So this plastic piece is this mechanism on here that you press to open this. So I gotta figure out how to fix this if it can be fixed. So I snapped it back in, it goes like this. However, they did break a piece off on the back. There's a broken piece on the back. And they got into the food, there's a bunch of food there. They didn't need all of it though. So another thing they've been doing is taking these binder clips off the bowl. So I have the bowl attached with these binder clips and this is the second time that I found some binder clips taken off. So I just put a paver directly on top of the feeder and then I'm gonna put the wood on top of this and I'll put another paver. Here's Richard, do you see him? He's been watching me. And I came over here to grab another paver and he was gonna run away but then I was like, hey Richard. And he, he just stood there. I don't wanna scare him. You want some food? Are you hungry? Are you hungry? I'll give you some food, Richard, okay? I'm getting so close, guys. I'm so close. I'm probably six feet away. Hey, Richard. Hey, Richard, you hungry? Want some food? His tail's still there. He's not going anywhere. Come here. So here's what's going on now. I replaced the wood with this piece of plywood. This is a two foot by two foot piece of plywood. It's gonna hang over the, the bowl, so it's gonna protect it a little bit from some rain. And I put two pavers on top, so it'll be heavier. So there's the two pavers on top and the paver on top of the actual feeder itself. So hopefully that'll keep everything in place. I'm gonna keep that feeder off because I'm gonna feed the cats just food on plates since I'm home. And um, yeah, so that's what's going on today. So I did not take the middle leg here off the table. I just butted the table up against the wood and there's a little bit of an overlap. So I think for now that's good. So there's quite a large area underneath the table where the cats can eat and stay dry and we'll see how this goes. We're supposed to get some rain this afternoon. Not a heavy storm or anything, but we'll see how it goes. And there's Richard, he's just hanging out. Hey Richard, you want some food? Little Richard. Hey little Richard. It's 8 a.m., I'm putting some food together. And look at this. Look, it's little Richard by the back door with Boo. Boo's not happy. Who's very not happy. What a brave cat Richard is. But he's no fool. He knows Boo's not happy. If that glass was not there, Boo would be in a fight right now. You're okay, Richard. You're okay. The door's shut. Look at that. One of the torties was just on top of the feeder. Checking out the new pavers. I don't know which one it was. So I have a plate of food here. It's some of the homemade cat food, the cooked cat food, which the cats like. And some um, dry cat food, some crunchies. I'm looking at the cats right now, so I'm a little distracted. So there's Richard. And today I feel like this cat's name is Goldie because it almost has like a gold coin on its head. It would be kind of a strange name for a cat that's so dark, but I don't know. Then it would be Ziggy and Goldie. We'll see. We'll see what happens if that sticks or if it doesn't feel right. See the, like the, it's like a gold marking on the head. I'm zoomed in as far as I could go. Is that missing fur? Is that lighter colored fur or is that actually missing fur? I can't really tell in this camera screen. So while I was standing here filming the other cat, Richard came to eat. He's like four feet away from me. This is the closest I've been to any of these cats yet. I don't wanna freak him out or scare him or anything. So I'm just gonna let him eat. I'm gonna go inside. The other cat will probably come, come by.
so this table is a much better size for multiple cats versus the other table. The other table is really only for like one or two cats. Oh, look at this. Look, I backed up about three feet. Hey, Goldie. So that's as zoomed in as I could go. Let's check this out. So the Dollar Tree now has pet bandanas. They might have had them before. I've never seen them there before. So I got this one. It's a small. And what I liked about them is that they have a Velcro closure. So I'm thinking it'll be much easier to get it on Boo or Stella. Um, they also had this one that I thought was cute. Um, it's like a pink leopard's print. I thought that would be nice for Stella. I thought this one would be nice for Boo, maybe even for Simba. Um, they didn't have like a traditional bandana like this one. So this is the one that I got at Christmas Tree Shop. The issue with this one is you have to knot it. There's no Velcro on it and it's it's a bit big so you have to kind of fold it uh, over itself. Um, and because there's no Velcro on it, it's harder to get it on the cat. So. Sim is checking everything out right now. So let's let's open one of these and let's see how they work. So this is what it looks like full size. And it does have a little bit of Velcro on each tip. Now if I was good at sewing, I probably could sew Velcro onto the edges of this one, but I don't really sew very good. So um, let's see if we could put this on Simba. I want to put it on his head. Right, you want me to, you want it around your neck? Okay, he likes it better around his neck. See? That's easy. That was very easy to put on Simba. Around his neck. He doesn't mind it around his neck. Aren't you handsome, Simba? And then from there, we could put it up. Oh, he doesn't like it on his ears. Good job, Simba. You did good. You modeled it nicely, okay? Let's see about Boo. Can we put on Boo? Can I smell it? Okay, good. Smelled it. Gonna put a hole in it? <gasps> Boo! Okay, you don't want it? Wow, that's what I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to get it from behind. He's biting it. Mm -hmm. Boo, don't bite it. Boo says he doesn't like it. Let's see if Stella will like her. Stella, look what you got. Smell it. Smell it. Nice. Okay. We'll put it around your neck. It is 12.30 p.m. and Simba's under the bed. Can you see him back there? And Stella's under the bed visiting him. And what happened this morning was Simba ate the raw food that I gave him. He ate the Stella and Chewy's raw food, which agrees with his stomach. And then I was cleaning up and I uh, was getting Boo to eat his food. And all of a sudden I turned around and Simba ate what was left over from Stella's food. Now Stella does not like the Stella and Chewy's food. So I gave her some of the instinct raw bites. The last time Simba ate those, he threw up. So when I realized that Simba had finished the raw bites that were on Stella's plate... I was like, all right, I got to keep an eye on him because I got to see how he's going to feel. And he was acting normal for a while, but now he's hanging out under the bed. So now he's not acting normal. This is what he did the last time he had some primal raw nuggets. Those are the ones that he used to throw up also. 
and the last time he had some he hung out under the bed and then he was fine like he didn't throw up or anything i think it gives him like indigestion or something and i did put the um the gut support uh liquid on all their food this morning so um yeah he needs to stay away from that food. He does fine on the Stella and Chewy's food. He does fine on the homemade raw food. He does fine on crunchies. He does fine on canned food. It's just those two brands of raw food are disagreeing with him right now. So that's what's going on here. It's 3.10 p.m. and Simba came out from under the bed. So what happened was Stella was pasturing me for a snack. So I gave her a churu or a part of a churu because I also gave Simba part of a churu. And I just wanted to see if he was interested in it. He was. He moved out of the corner where he was hiding under the bed. And he ate part of it under the bed. Stella ate part of it. And next thing you know, here's Simba. He came out. So it's a good sign. I think... You know, the food didn't agree with him. Maybe he has some indigestion or something from it. But I just have to make sure to keep him away from that food. Um, and then once that food's all gone, I just won't be buying it anymore. I'm just going to stick to the Stella and Chewies because uh, the cats do well with that. Although Stella doesn't really like that food. That's why I gave her the food because she likes the other food better. Do you see what's going on outside? I don't know what's going on, but Sneakers is sneaking around again. He's like all hunched down, sneaking around. I don't know if his name is Sneakers or Clyde, because I was thinking about Sneakers. Oh, he just went off running somewhere. So I was thinking about Sneakers, and then I was thinking of different brands of Sneakers, and I was like, well, Puma are my favorite brand of Sneakers. I was like, maybe I could call him Puma, but I just feel like that's not his name. So then I was like, well, what are some of the names of the different Puma sneakers? And one of their most famous styles is called Clyde. So then I was like, oh, I wonder if the cat's name is Clyde. So I'm still trying on names. It's 4.30 p.m. and we're supposed to get rain soon. So I put a plate of food out under the feeding table. And when I did that, Ziggy was out in the back corner. And there she is now. You see her? So as soon as I came inside, she ran over to the plate to eat, but then I think she got bit by a bug or something. The next thing I knew, she was running back toward the grass, and um, she was like swatting at stuff. So there's a lot of bugs out um, lately. Now she's walking around to the back of the yard. And um, so the food's there. Um, if anyone wants to eat it before it starts raining, um... I've been making phone calls today with regards to getting these cats spayed and neutered and it's way more complicated than it should be. It is like absolutely ridiculous. I've been leaving messages, waiting for callbacks, which I have not been getting, and contacting various services and companies. And it's ridiculous that there's not a quick and easy way to go about having some feral cats spayed and neutered. I could put a trap out tomorrow, potentially trap one of them, but then I would have nowhere to bring them as far as spay and neuter because none of the local practices that I talk to will do something like that. One of the vets that I talked to today was like, well, you know, it'll cost between $500 and $600 for a spay and neuter. Um, if you're not going to go through one of the discount programs. And then she was like naming off all these different programs. And then I look into the programs and all the information is completely out of date. And they're like recommending people to contact vets that I know have been out of business for years. For example, the vet that I took Stella Splash and Simba to back in 2016, 2017, they're completely out of business, but they're still showing up on all these referral lists. So I don't know. It's just a it's just a big mess. It's horrible. So there's Goldie. She came over to eat. I don't know if that name is going to stick to her, but I'm calling her that right now because she kind of reminds me of like a gold coin on her forehead. It's 5.05 p.m. right now, and I went outside to close up the greenhouse a few minutes ago, and it was perfect timing because right now the wind is really starting to pick up, and... Um, yeah, it looks like maybe there's a storm coming. I'm actually going to go outside. I'm going to see if I could go outside and move some of this stuff off the table because I don't want it blowing around. Um, I don't know if it's heavy enough to not blow around. And um, maybe I'll put some more stuff in the garage just to keep it from blowing. 
I just put a bunch of stuff away and I tied up the umbrella. Hopefully that won't fly anywhere. And the plate of food blew, uh, blew over, so I put it under one of the legs. Hopefully that should hold. The other feeding table's been out in all kinds of crazy weather. So um, yeah, hopefully this will just pass quickly. It's 6 p.m. There were four cats outside, so I put a new plate of food together for them. The other one is pretty wet from the rain. And there's Richard. So he was out there with some of the others who all ran away. And then he only ran like halfway back onto the grass. And then he just kind of sat there. He actually blinked at me a few times. And then he came back once I came inside. And there's one of the torties back there. It's 7 p.m. Splashes by the back door. And there's Richard, do you see him? There's Splash, and there's Richard. He's the bravest of the bunch. He's the smallest, and he's the bravest. He's really interested in any of the cats that are inside this door. At least I think that's Richard. Here comes Boo, there's Boo. Boo's not happy. Who sees the cat yet? Yeah, it's Richard. Be nice, everybody. Be nice. He's chasing a bug around the patio. I think tabby cats must be hunters. Simple love chasing bugs. Let's see what happens if I go outside. Hey. Hey. How are you? So there's still dry food on the platters. Look who it is, it's Ziggy. Hey Ziggy. Hello Ziggy. How are you? Where's your friend Richard? Or your brother? Where's your brother Richard? Where is he at? If I walk that way, she's gonna get scared and run, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go back inside. It's noticeably cooler out right now. It was pretty hot and humid today, and it's gotten really cool. I wonder what would happen if I went and sat in the greenhouse. So I'm in the greenhouse right now. I just opened the window because there's a fly in here. This greenhouse is made out of pretty thin plastic. So there's not much insulation against sound or um, like temperature. What I'll do once the weather starts getting colder is I'll actually wrap this entire greenhouse in clear plastic. And that helps to insulate it a little bit, but for uh, the summer season um, it's not wrapped at all and uh, on really hot days it got up to over a hundred in here and that's with the door open the window open and uh, there's a little fan in here too so there's Richard he's on the other side of the patio I'm in the greenhouse he's on the patio he's getting more and more comfortable in the patio with me Hey Richard, you look pretty. Okay, you got scared. I'm getting bit up by bugs. It's 7, 10 p.m. I just went outside and put some more raw food on the platter. And then look at this, like, it looks like either three or four cats. I don't know where they came from. They must have came from the back of the yard. I don't know who's eating. I need to fix the, um, the cameras facing the wrong direction out there. It's 7.15 and I just went outside. I gave them the rest of the homemade raw food that I had defrosted for them and a few more handfuls of dry food. And there's five of them outside right now. Oh, and I forgot to move the camera again. 
I forgot to move the camera because when I was putting the food out, um, the one with the white paws, like Charlie or Clyde or Chuck, I haven't figured out his name yet, he like came over to the plates. And I was so like shocked that he wasn't running away. So um, yeah, I'll give them um, some time and then I'll go back out and move that camera. Guys, there's a fox on the patio right now. I don't know where it went. I just checked the security camera. There's a possum on the other side of the patio. Here's a cat. And there was a fox, like literally a minute ago. I don't know where it went. I hope the cats stay safe. So this would be the second time I saw the fox here. I don't know if you could see it, but the, um, the possum is near the patio furniture. So first we heard like a noise, like something was moving around and I thought it was um, I thought it was raccoons trying to get into the automatic feeder again. Look at this, this cat's just sitting here. Here's another cat. And there goes a possum in between them. I don't know where the fox went. You guys okay out there? Boo's at the window with me. You guys okay? There it is. I think he was eating some of the, um, he was eating some of the food on the, there's a little bit of food left on the platters. I wish the cats would go away. I hope cats can outrun a fox. You guys see the fox? Get away. They're just looking at me. The other one's just hanging out. I don't want to scare the fox and cause something weird to happen. But I, I, I don't know where it came in. Oh, there's the possum. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh my God. <gasps> I hope the possum's okay. I hope they're not gonna fight over food. So the cat moved over and the po the cat moved over. There's the fox. Come on, cat. Come on, cat. Go away, cat. I don't know if the fox is afraid of the cat or what. It's a little fox. I wonder if it's the same one that was here uh, like a few weeks ago. I don't know anything about fox behavior. This is the first year I've seen them in my yard on my patio. I've never seen them before around here at all. For as long as I've lived here, I've never seen a fox. And now this is twice within a few weeks. I can't believe the cat is just sitting there. Just looking at it. I don't know which cat that is either. Okay. So someone made a noise and the fox ran off. I don't know where it ran. So it ran off to like the side of the house. Oh, that's, is that Ziggy or is that Goldie? Oh, that's Goldie. That's Goldie sitting there. These cats are so brave. So the fox is back. And it's poking around near the feeder and the platters. This is why I don't want to leave food out at night. I'd rather get the cats fed earlier. So it's just trying to eat whatever's left on the platters. It's a really skinny fox. I've never seen foxes this skinny before.
Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. It's 6.35 a.m. and I woke up a little while ago and I looked at the security camera footage and the cats outside, um, the babies, are looking for food. They're trying to get into the automatic feeder the way that the raccoons try to get into it. So I just put a plate of food out. It's some of the homemade raw food I made for them and some dry food. And this little one, Ziggy, um, was near the driveway on the other side of the patio and it saw me put the food down and I came inside. The minute I came inside, it went running across the patio to get to the food. I was like, oh, that's interesting. This is like the first time I've seen that. So it's obviously very hungry. Now, they did eat dinner last night. Um, but as the days are getting shorter, their dinner is getting earlier and earlier every day. So it's been, it's been quite a while since they've had dinner, almost 12 hours. And... Um, the nights are getting cooler, so they're burning more calories in the cooler weather. I hope this one is okay and not dealing with mouth issues because it keeps eating and then jumping away from the food. Unless there are bugs out there. There's usually a bunch of bugs out there. Now the food might still be kind of cold also because it was completely frozen um, about seven or eight hours ago. And it does take a long time. Look at this. Look at this. So Boo is right below me. Hello. 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 Looking at Boo. Hello. What I might do I might grab a can of Friskies and put that out because the Friskies is room temperature and uh, the cats might like it better. Here's Stella. Stella woke me up also. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is that last night I found out that the fox that came around has mange and it has it pretty bad because I was looking at the security camera footage and I was like, this fox has no fur in its tail. Its tail almost looks like the tail of a possum. And so I started researching that, and then I found out that that's an issue when a fox has mange. And I also noticed that the fox looked like um, it had like a bunch of crustiness around its face, like around its head. I thought maybe because the fox was out in the rain, but then I realized that was another symptom of mange also. So the poor fox is sick, and the fact that it's coming around um, my yard looking for food is like another symptom of a fox with mange. Um, I looked into it and people say that you can give the fox ivermectin. You can actually inject it into hard boiled eggs and the foxes will eat it. Um, the cats won't eat it, but foxes will eat that. And over time, it helps to heal them. If they're too far gone um, and if their internal organs are starting to fail, then you really can't do anything. But if they're not that far gone, then if they eat the ivermectin, then it could help them recover. So I'm going to look into that today. They say you could buy it on Amazon. And I'm pretty sure I've seen it being sold at Tractor Supply because it is uh, for livestock. But it is supposed to be very helpful um, with regards to mange and foxes. So I'm going to look into that today. It's on my list of things to do. Like I need another thing to do or another sick animal to deal with. But um, yeah, they also say you could inject it into hot dogs and the foxes will eat those, but cats will eat those too. So I'm trying to find something that I could put it in that cats won't eat. They also say foxes have a sweet tooth, so you could inject it into a cookie or something and they'll eat it. So the issue is that whatever foxes eat, raccoons are also going to eat, potentially also possums and skunks. So I don't know. Like, I couldn't just put it out and wait for the fox to come by because I haven't seen a fox in my yard in several weeks. Um, but if the fox does return and if it does become a nightly visitor, then that's when I would put it out. I'd probably just get it to have. And then if the fox returns, put it out. 
It's 6.45 and there's now two plates of food out. So the plate on the right has a can of Friskies and the plate on the left has homemade raw food with some crunchies on top. And we'll see if the cats come back. We have to remember the cats could be getting food somewhere else uh, or they could be out hunting right now. So um, this is just kind of like a backup food for them. And um, yeah, so they have plenty of food. And this is how the feeder and the table survived the night. So the table's looking a little bit a little bit warped. I gotta see what's going on with that. Um, maybe because the patio's not exactly flat, or it could be because the raccoons really tried to attack the feeder last night. So they were trying to get in through the bowl, and they were on top. So they tried uh, at the same time. There's one trying to get in the bowl, and there's one on top trying to move those pavers. So far, it looks like that uh, setup um, is good and is able to keep them out of the food. They are still sticking their paws up, trying to get, you know, to the food in the machine, but they're not having any luck. So, uh, that's good because it was pretty much an unending supply of raccoons the previous night. I, I don't need like 20 or 30 raccoons every night coming in thinking they're gonna just take over the patio and eat all the food. It is 5 p.m. and there is the paper bowl that I put a hard-boiled egg in um, several hours ago so I took a ride up to Tractor Supply to buy some medicine for the fox with mange and um, it's like a 40 minute ride to get there and I looked around went to Aldi next door um, then drove back so all totaled more than two hours and I just got back and I said let me check to see if the hard-boiled egg is in the bowl and it's not in the bowl and I don't know where it is. I don't see any sign of it anywhere. I don't see um, like bits of half-eaten egg anywhere. I would assume if the cats were going to eat it, there would be some kind of um, debris from it. Usually a cat's not going to swallow a hard-boiled egg whole. I've never heard of a cat doing that. Um, so I don't know what happened to the egg. I have no idea. I looked at the security camera footage and in one video the egg is still in the bowl. In the next video, cats are walking around, there's no egg in the bowl, so I don't know if another animal showed up and ate it, or another animal showed up and took it away somewhere, or I don't know. I have no idea where it is. Meanwhile, as I'm filming the bowl, this is what Ziggy's doing, just hanging out on the grass, and she was kind of checking me out as I was walking around unloading the car. She was just hanging out near the feeding table, so she's looking for some food. And look at what's going on back there. So there were two or three other cats back there in the back corner. I don't know if this is Richard or Ringo. It's hard to tell from the front sometimes. They look really, really similar. Um, so I'm going to go inside and put some food out for the cats. I'm going to um, cut up some raw chicken wings. That looks like Ringo. I'm going to cut up some raw chicken wings. Or maybe it's the other tabby with um, like the ring design on the side of the fur like a classic tabby. Um, what I was saying was I'm gonna go give them some food, also cut up some chicken wings, some raw chicken wings, see if they like that. Hey Ziggy, where's the egg at? Where's the egg at? Where's the egg at? Do you see the egg anywhere? Where'd you guys put it? Did you eat it? Did you eat the egg? Did you eat the egg, Ziggy? Did you eat the egg, Ziggy? Ziggy, did you eat the egg? I'm trying to get a good look at her face to see if she has any signs of mange. The way that the fox did. Oh look! There's Richard. See him there? Look. He's over here, right here. That's little Richard. And there's Ziggy. They're just checking me out. I'm pretty close to them. I'm probably five or six feet away. This is like the closest that I've been with the camera. And then who's that in the back? I don't know who that, that's the new one. That's the new one in the back. What's his name or her name? Is it a girl? Maybe his name is Max. Max could be like for a girl or a boy, right? Is that Max? Ziggy? Richard? They're blinking at me. They look itchy because there's like, there's a bunch of flies 
the little gnats. Hello. Hello. Okay, I'm going to give you guys some food, okay? I'm going to give you guys some food, okay? Can I get closer? No. It's 5.10 p.m. I just put plates of food together. And look at what's going on here. Right in the middle of the patio. Ziggy's all stretched out. And Boo's looking. Boo's below me right now. Here's Boo. He's like, what's going on? The inside cats want dinner also. And there's Richard. He moved over on the patio also. He's behind that piece of wood. So what do you think? Do they look like they're getting more comfortable? I did some more research today with regards to getting them spayed and neutered. I reached out to some local people that I know to find out some information. Unfortunately, what they suggested is no longer a possibility, so I had to update them. It seems that they haven't been um, TNRing or spaying and neutering in a little while. And um, so the services that they used are no longer options. So as I mentioned yesterday, it should not be this difficult and time consuming just to find a vet or a service that will help to spay and neuter feral cats. So here's Ziggy, Goldie, and Little Richard. They're watching me. And I just put two platters of food down under the table. So on the right, um, we have some wholehearted uh, beef pate. The inside cats don't like it. Um, and there's a chicken wing in the middle, and then there's dry food around the edges. And on the left is the homemade raw food that I made for the cats outside with some dry food and also a chicken wing in the middle and we'll see what they eat I don't know if they're gonna eat the wings they might they might not but look how close I am right now I'm probably only three feet away I'm crouched down to get a good view oh look at this there's another one that just showed up so they're going straight for the homemade raw food that's what they're licking up So there's three here, Ringo and his twin. I have to find a name for the other one. Okay guys, I'm gonna go in. So I believe Ringo is the one sitting next to Goldie. And I don't know who the other one is yet. I think it's a girl. And she has more um, like brown fur along with the gray and the black. Whereas he is mostly just gray and black. And she's like brown, gray and black. Okay, I'm gonna go in. I'll go in so you guys can eat, okay? See, they're afraid of me. I just came inside and now they're all eating. I still wanna know what happened with that hard boiled egg. So I did a little bit more research on how to get medicine into the fox and they say not to put bait out like the first night. Well, first of all, I don't even know if the fox is going to come back tonight because it doesn't come by every night or at least it hasn't. Um, so they say, you know, wait a few days until you know a routine that is established until you recognize a routine that's established as far as the fox eating food at certain times. And, um, and then putting, oh, someone took the chicken wing. Uh, the tortie, I don't know if that's Goldie. Oh yeah, Goldie. Goldie took the chicken wing. She took it. And Ziggy, I'm thinking maybe Ziggy has some kind of mouth problem because she'll like start eating and then she'll like back away as if like maybe it's hurting her. Okay, so the three under the table are eating. I don't know where, I don't know where Ringo took the, uh, I mean, I don't know where Goldie took the, the chicken wing to. So the three under the table are all gathered around the homemade food. It looks like they 
they ate that first. Maybe now they're working on some of the crunchies on that plate. And the chicken wing is still on that plate. And I don't know where Goldie went. She just kind of left. I don't know if that name's going to stick to her or not. I hope Ziggy can eat and is not having problems with her mouth. It could just be an issue with like the bees or the bugs that are flying around. See, like she didn't even touch the food, but there's there's like bees flying around it. You okay? You okay? Want separate food? I don't remember her having so much light fur on her face. That's why I'm wondering if she has a form of mange also. Hopefully not. It could just be a bunch of bugs that have been bothering her. We'll have to see. It's 5.35 p.m. I just looked out the window and Ziggy was all stretched out on the patio. Like, all stretched out. What is she playing with her foot? She seems to be very happy. Look at that. <laughs> so it looks like she has light fur on her underbelly. There goes the one with the white shoes. I don't know if this is Clyde or Chuck or Charlie. I haven't figured out his name yet. Oh my gosh, I hope she's not in heat. That's what I just thought. Oh my gosh. Usually they will, you know, go into a certain position with their butt in the air, tail to the side kind of thing. So they ate all the homemade raw food on the plate on the left and they left the uh, the canned food on the right. I'm going to put more homemade food on the, the platter on the left. I just put more homemade food down and there's like, I don't know if they're bees or wasps or what, but they're just like flying all over and it's horrible. I don't know how these cats are dealing with it. You, I don't know, can you see them here? And it looks like someone else is now enjoying a chicken wing. I think that's Ringo. Which is good. Maybe I'll put two more chicken wings out. I think these are the wings from Costco. They're already cut up. I thought I was going to have to cut each wing into smaller pieces, but... These are already the ones that are cut up. They're party wings. So I'm standing here like a few feet away from this table and the cats are coming up to it to eat. He just ran away with his chicken wing. He's like, no one's taking my chicken wing. It's 5.45. I put two more pieces of chicken wings out there. Um, the cats got scared when I did that and they kind of ran off. And I'm wondering if the cat with the socks, I wonder if his name is Jimmy. Because I was thinking like, oh, gym socks, gym shoes, sneakers. So his name might be Jimmy. i got to see how that fits with him. It's 7 p.m. And it looks like the cats have finished all the food that I put out on the two platters. I filled them multiple times, so... I think what I'm going to do is put a little more dry food out, and then that's it. It's starting to get dark already. 
Maybe I'll put out one more of the hard boiled eggs, this time without taking the shell off, just to see what happens. I have this adorable little gnome bird feeder. Look how cute he is. I put him out today and I put some bird seed in his little bowl there and there were no birds. I don't know what happened to all the birds. Maybe because the cats have been coming around, now the birds are staying away. Um, I don't know, maybe they flew south for the winter. I don't know, it's really weird, especially with bird seed out. So, um, and I put it out early in the day too, so. Hopefully the raccoons are not going to destroy this gnome. Um, the last gnome that I had, um, not the one that people call Hank, but the one after that, um, he was broken by some form of wildlife. I'm assuming the raccoons, they kind of broke him into pieces, so. We'll see what happens to this little guy. It's about 7.40 p.m. I was in the living room with the cats and we just heard what sounded like like an animal scream. We don't know, um, I don't know if it was a cat, a raccoon. I mean, it could have been a person. I mean, like some kids screaming, but it sounded like an animal scream. Like, you know, when some cats get in a fight or something, it wasn't a, uh, like a long thing. It was just um, kind of quick, but all the cats got freaked out when they heard it. And I figured, let me come out. So there's two cats back here. Um, it did not sound like it was coming from the patio. It sounded like it was coming from either uh, the next yard or maybe from the woods. Like, I don't know. Um, so yeah, I don't know what's going on. Today I did see some of the kittens in the next yard. On the other side of this fence is my neighbor's yard and their house is still under renovation and the yard is just full of debris. Um, not as bad as it was, they did clear some of it up but there's a lot of debris in their yard and I saw some of the kittens walking around in the yard. So I, I hope they're careful when they're over there but um, yeah, I don't know what's going on. 7.52 p.m. and I'm being visited by this cat. This is not one of the kittens. This is a larger tabby. Looks very well fed and it's just been sitting on the patio staring at the back door. So I'm gonna put some food out for it and I'm gonna give it a separate little plate. Maybe this is the cat that got into a fight with the other kittens. You know, they do gang up on outsiders. Maybe this cat was trying to eat some of the food and they were not happy. I don't know. So, I'm gonna go give it some food. And look who's here. Look who's relaxing on the patio. It's Ziggy. Hello, Ziggy. How are you? And there's a few others eating food. I just put some more crunchies out for them also. Here you go. And some food. Here. I just put the plate of food on the patio, maybe like three feet away from the water bowl. And the cat kind of ran around the side to the other part of the yard. I don't know if it'll come back, maybe if I go inside. And I put another hard boiled egg in the bowl underneath the feeding table. We'll see what happens. I also have to check the security camera because the one that was pointed at it, um, the battery died. I swapped it out with another one, so I have to make sure that one's working. So the cat came back to eat, and that's why I put the plate a few feet away from the water bowl. Because I figured the kittens would come to the water bowl. I don't know if they're related to this cat, this cat could be their mom. It's really hard to keep track of the uh, other cats. Like I've figured out the six kittens, or the seven kittens actually, um, but the other tabbies that I've been visiting, it's, it's hard to keep track of them. Like, obviously, all the cats that live outside kind of know each other. See, 
See, she just got called back, or he. They're like, don't go over there. And Boo's looking out the window right now also. So I cannot spend my entire night um, looking out the window at what the cats are doing. Um, I have to get other things done, so. I have cameras on outside. And I'll check in on them later. Hopefully it will be a quiet, uneventful night. They have been enjoying going on the patio furniture, I will say that. I've caught them sleeping on the patio chairs, or at least relaxing on the patio chairs. I don't know if you can see what's going on here, but there's a skunk eating the food. Yeah, it's eating the food on the platter. It's probably too dark to see this right now, but Ziggy is all sprawled out on the patio like she was before, like she's totally stretching out. There's multiple cats spread all across the patio right now. That's crazy. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. It's 7.40 a.m. I'm bringing out another platter of food. So there's a platter of food under the feeding table, and there's Jimmy. I'm going to see if that name sticks to him. Um, he's eating some food, so they have some of the homemade raw food, along with um, some crunchies. And there's Ziggy under the table. I just put another plate of food, so this is some of the wholehearted um, chicken and beef pate. The inside cats don't like it, along with some more crunchies. This is the hard-boiled egg from last night. Uh, no one touched it, no one ate it, and that mangy fox did not come around. I'm gonna go inside now. He's gonna go back and eat. Hello. 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 All these cats love each other. They're one big family. Oh, it meowed. Ziggy meowed. Hey, Ziggy. Hey, Ziggy. I'm trying to get a look at her face to see what's going on with it. It's 9.15 a.m. These are platters number five and six for the cat, so it's more of the wholehearted canned cat food with crunchies. They've eaten four platters so far this morning, and I think it's four or five of the cats. I don't know exactly which ones because I haven't been really keeping track, but um, yeah, they've been eating a lot of food, which is good. It is 6.55 a.m. And I just put two platters of food out. It's supposed to rain today, and it's supposed to start fairly soon. So I wanted to make sure I put some food out for the cats. There's three of them out there now. Um, one of them is Goldie, if that's her name. I think the other one is Richard. It's hard to tell um, because they're in a shadow. And then the other one is not Ringo. It's the other classic tabby. They have a different face. This one looks more like a girl. I haven't really um, decided on a name yet. And also, I think I saw her backside, and I think she's a girl. So, still figuring that one out. They're eating the homemade food. Not the homemade raw food, the homemade cooked food. I don't know if that was the last container of it. I have to go look in the fridge. I definitely like making the homemade raw food so much better than making the homemade cooked food. It's just cleaner, easier, and quicker. And the homemade cooked food just, it takes a lot longer. There's a lot more steps involved and uh, there's a lot more cleanup. So I don't know if I'll be making that again anytime soon. Um, obviously if I had like leftover cooked chicken or turkey or something, then 
I could easily use that. I was looking at the security camera footage from overnight. Because the automatic feeder's off, it gets visited by less raccoons and wildlife than it normally does. But every night, there's one or two skunks visiting. There's one or two possums visiting. Uh, there are still raccoons trying to get into the food, but they have not been successful. So they, they kind of just try and then leave. And then the cats have been kind of patrolling the yard. And every so often, they, they do kind of sniff around under the table looking for food. So I don't know where the rest of them are. I should also mention that last night, like well after typical business hours, I got a phone call and it's an unknown caller. And I was like, I don't know who that is. So I'm just going to let it go to voicemail. And when I checked the voicemail, it was a woman from the rescue group who has not gotten back to me in like a week. I'm the one that I've emailed and left voicemail for. And she got back to me and left me a very brief message saying, She's not at a number I could call her back on, so she's just going to try me again. I don't know what's going on there. Um, and then I got an email back from another rescue group that I contacted, and they're very local. And they told me that they couldn't help me, that I would have to contact animal control, local animal control. So I wrote them back, but then after that, I immediately had to go out to an appointment and then my car broke down. Well, it didn't actually break down, it overheated. So I had to pull over to the side of the road, wait for it to cool down, and I could only drive like a mile, mile and a half at a time. And then I had to pull over, wait for it to cool down, and it took me forever to get home. And then I had to make an appointment to have it fixed, which is tomorrow. And um, then I went and I bought some antifreeze, some coolant, and it ended up that the engine had absolutely no coolant in it. So I don't know if it's a leak. I don't know what the issue is. So I got to find that out tomorrow. Hopefully it's not going to be an expensive fix. So now there's four cats here. Um, Ziggy just joined them. The table is a nice size. You can see there's four cats easily sitting under this table. So even if it was raining out, they would be sheltered while they're eating. So I'm going to go finish getting ready for my day and I'll be back. The plates will probably be empty. Another thing I should mention is that I have been putting a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar on each platter. So I'll put the food on the platter. I'll then measure out a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. I'll sprinkle it uh, on the food on the platter. Then I add in water and then I put some crunchies on it and then I give it to the cats. So. There's Richard now. The question is, where did he come from? Was he just under the table, or do we now have five cats? I think we now have five cats. One, two, yeah, there's five. Three, four, five, so two are missing. Sammy's not here, the black and white one. And then the one with the white paws. I don't know if I'm gonna be calling him Jimmy. Um, he's missing. I feel like I want to call him Boots, but it's too similar to Boo. Boo and Boots is just way too similar, so that's why I'm trying to find something else that resonates with him. It's starting to thunder now. has not started to rain yet, but it, the storm is definitely on the way. So I filled up the platters again. They were empty. Uh, I gave them the rest of the homemade food, so that's a full pint of homemade food, 16 ounces, mixed with some water and apple cider vinegar, and then I put some more crunchies on the plate. So hopefully they'll eat fast, they'll finish, and and then go to some kind of shelter for safety. I don't know where they've been sheltering. They can go um, under my house. Um, the Rubbermaid tub shelter is open. It's always been open. Um, they could just hang out under my house. There's room there. Hydrox's old shelter. Wow, that shook the house. Hydrox's old shelter is closed because it's been closed since last year, since Ditto came inside. I did not need possums and skunks moving in. So it's been closed. I don't know if I'm going to open that yet. It's not really shelter season for the cats. Um, they don't use shelters until it's much colder out. They just prefer not to be in them. Even like Hydrox Ditto, Boo, Stella, when they're outside, 
they weren't ready to use shelters yet, usually until probably November or December when it starts getting really cold. Also, the doghouse shelter um, is outside the one that the automatic feeder used to be in. So if they needed to go in there, they could go in there to shelter, but they obviously have some place that they go because, you know, they've been living outside their entire life. So they know what to do. This is not their first storm. So I'm gonna go and finish getting ready for my day. 7.15 a.m. It just started raining and all the cats scattered. I'm wondering if I should go maybe put some pavers under the table and raise these plates off the ground just so they don't get soaking wet. 7.19 a.m. and it is pouring out and we're getting really loud thunder. It's freaking the cats out. And I'm really happy that I put the food out when I did. It was perfect timing. A little bit earlier would have been even better, but it was dark out. I didn't want to put it out while it was still dark out because sometimes raccoons come back. So I don't know why I woke up early today. It was just kind of like random that I woke up at like 5.30 a.m. Mission accomplished. Cats are fed this morning. It's 3.10 p.m. and the sun came out. It stopped raining. And I looked outside and Sammy was eating some food under the table. And it was just um, a little bit of the wet crunchies from earlier. So I opened up a can of food and I gave them some crunchies, which they're eating now. Um, there's Ziggy and I'm not sure who the other two are. So today I got two replies from the local rescues. Um, one of them saying that I have to go through animal control, uh, even though I explained the situation and that I didn't want to go through animal control. And the other was so helpful. It was the rescue group that had not gotten back to me in a while. The one like I emailed them and called them and it took them a while to get back to me. But it was well worth it because when she did finally get back to me, she had so much information for me like I was taking notes for like 20 minutes and she had a lot of good suggestions and she told me that animal control has a waiting list five pages long and she told me that some other um, services that also do TNRs are booked up until December. Um, she said she's never seen it like this before there's definitely a vet shortage and there's a lot of animals that need spaying and neutering and care so um, that's the situation. She also gave me some um, leads as far as other vets um, in the area that uh, handle feral cats and TNRs and that kind of stuff. So she said I would have to make an appointment with them and explain that it's a TNR and that I might not be able to get the cat in the trap. And if that's the case, just to make sure I call them early in the day and let them know that um, I won't be bringing a cat in so that they can reschedule an emergency or, or something else. At least I got some good leads. Um, I might make some phone calls later today. I'm just so far behind with like work stuff because I've been dealing with uh, my car, which is overheating and not running correctly. I have to take that into the shop tomorrow. So tomorrow morning I have to take my car into the shop and then maybe in the afternoon I can make some phone calls with regards to spay and neuters and we'll see how it goes. But at least today I feel like, okay, I'm making some progress as far as information and stuff, so that's good. It's 7.20 p.m. and I just looked out the back door and there was four cats having fun on the patio. Right now there's three of them. One of them ran off um, down the walkway. Um, so there goes little Richard running into the bushes and there is the one with the boots. I don't know if I'm going to call him Jimmy or Chuck. I haven't figured that one out yet. I might call him Chuck. Um, and I think, oh, there is, is that Ziggy? Oh no, that's Goldie. That's Goldie. I don't know if that name is going to stick, but that's what it is for now. I looked out the window and it looks like they still have some food on the platters, 
but I might go put some crunchies on the platters. Um, I gave them two cans of uh, Trader Joe's uh, canned turkey and giblets. Now Trader Joe's has discontinued their cat food, um, the 5.5 ounce cans of cat food that they sold. So I'm just using the cans that I have on a shelf in my basement. I have like a storage room in my basement and I have some um, inventory on cat food. So that's what I'm using because the inside cats don't really like it. But I'm going to go put some dry food out there and uh, that way the cats will have it. It's getting dark right now. The sun has almost gone down, which means the other critters are going to start walking around. I just put like four handfuls of dry cat food on the platters. It's starting to get windy out, which is kind of weird. I don't think we have a storm coming. I thought all the storms had passed already. And it is noticeably cooler outside. Tomorrow is supposed to be much, look at this, one of them just came running full speed across the patio. Um, what I was saying is tomorrow is supposed to be a lot cooler. I think it's actually going to get down into the 40s. Um, I have to take my car into the shop tomorrow morning. I think it's going to be around 60 degrees at that time. Hopefully it'll be in the 60s, not the 50s. And then later in the day, it's supposed to even get cooler. So what's this cat doing? Oh, I have not seen any of the cats go in that shelter over there. But today I was thinking about opening up um, Hydroxy shelter, the one that's under the house, the custom cat shelter under the house. But I need to put a new camera in it. So um, the past few years, I had a set of security cameras outside, um, wired security cameras. So they were always on. It was like 24-7 cameras. And I uh, disconnected all of those. And I have a new camera set that I bought over a year ago and I have never taken it out of the boxes and it's supposed to be better uh, than the last uh, camera set which was kind of old so I would like to put a new camera in the shelter just to keep an eye on things it was really nice to know what was going on in there it was really really nice and I did not have the camera connected when Hydrox spent her last day or two in the shelter so we had no idea what was going on in the shelter at all. There is a little window, but you can't really see a whole lot in there. Um, so it might have been better if the camera had been connected at that time. I'm also wondering if there's any other strategic locations um, around the yard where I should be putting it. So I'm just giving it some thought. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. It's 7.24 a.m. and I just put two platters of food out. It's the homemade raw food with some crunchies on it. There's four cats eating. I'm not sure exactly which ones. I'm on a really tight schedule today. I have to be out of here for a nine o'clock appointment. I have a lot to do before then. So I put their food out and I'll check back in a little while. If the platters are empty, I'll put more out. It's 4.15 p.m. It is super windy out, and I was out here cleaning up the patio, and Goldie, if that's gonna be her name, was looking at me, and she was looking for food. Like, she came up to the table, and she was looking for food. Oh, who's this, Richard? There's Richard. And so I put some food out, but it's so windy, so I had to put it under one of the table legs, and then three other cats came out, so I was like, well, there's four now. So I put two platters out and hopefully they'll come back and eat it. Look how pretty Richard is. You're so pretty, Richard. You're a handsome boy. You're so handsome. And let me show you what's going on here. So I went to refill the water bowl on the side of the house and there's like a big piece of vine on the ground next to it. And I was like, what's that from? So I looked up and there's this whole mass of vines that are just hanging off this tree so last summer when i had all the trees trimmed um there was a ton of vines um, i think they're all like wisteria vines and they took out what they could take out and then there was a bunch left and they've since died so now there's a bunch of dead vines up in this tree 
And what's happening is with the wind, I guess the wind knocks some of them down. But like right there in the middle, there's that whole bunch of vines that needs to come down. So I moved the water bowl away from underneath it. Um, I moved it a few feet over and I'm hoping it does not come down on anybody. Like it doesn't come down when a cat's underneath it. Um, and I'm hoping it's light and not heavy since they are vines. The ones that I picked up were really light because I know that when like a tree limb falls, it's really heavy and that, that could do like a lot of damage and injury. So I'm hoping uh, this doesn't do damage or injury. I'm just hoping it stays in the tree and we'll see what happens. It's just that with, with all this wind, I, I think it's been knocking stuff down. And then here you see that other vine that's hanging between these two trees. Yeah, they're all like tangled up and everything. So we'll see what happens. It's 6.51 p.m. I just got home, pulled into the driveway, and there was a cat laying on the driveway, and then there was a cat in one of the bushes. They went running to the back here, and here's two cats. It looks like they're waiting for dinner. So the two platters from earlier are empty, so I'll put some more food together for them and then I'll bring it out and put it on those platters. It's still really windy and uh, it's quite cold. And I was going to open up the shelter under the house for them just in case they wanted to use it. I might still do that, although I gotta feed the inside cats, gotta do all the cat chores inside and it might be dark by then because it starts getting dark right around now and I was out longer than I thought I would be. So it ends up that my car which is in the shop, is still not done. I dropped it off 9 a.m., had a 9 a.m. appointment. It's been there all day. They finally called me like an hour ago, and then they told me that they don't know what's wrong with it. They've been checking it all afternoon, and they can't figure out what the problem is. So it ends up I'm going to leave it there overnight, and hopefully tomorrow then they'll be able to um, fix it, and then I'll be able to pick it up. So that kind of messed up my original plans for the afternoon. So that's why I got back later. It's 8, 12 a.m. I put a platter of food out maybe five or 10 minutes ago. So it's homemade raw food with some dry cat food. And there's three cats right now. I'm not sure which ones um, they are. I'm gonna put another platter out and then um, I'll check in with them later. I just put another platter out and when I go outside they run toward the back of the yard and I noticed on the platter that they're eating from they eat all the raw food first and then they leave the crunchies for last maybe they don't like them as much I don't know so there's another platter and I'll check back in a little while I'm still getting ready for my day grandma and grandpa are supposed to be visiting today and I'm trying to get some stuff done before they get here so We'll check in with the cats later. It's 8.45 a.m. The landscapers are here. They showed up this morning and I texted them and I said avoid the back area behind the patio. So hopefully they're not gonna come back here and disturb the cats. But look at that. Both of the platters are licked clean. So I'm gonna put some more food together and put it out there for the cats. So those are platters number three and four and that makes a whole pound of homemade raw food. So they went through an entire pint, which is fine. It cost me about $2 a pound or less, um, which is cheaper than even buying Friskies. And I put some more of the dry food out there. And they look like they're filling out nicely. I've noticed that on the security camera footage over the past few days. So um, several weeks ago when they started coming around, they were really skinny and bony, and now they look like they've filled out nicely. I don't look at them and say, oh my gosh, they're starving, because obviously they're not. They've been getting fed on a regular basis. And when I was talking to uh, the woman from the rescue and also animal control, they said the best thing to do is to get them on a set schedule 
so that they show up at certain times, for example, for breakfast and for dinner, because then it should be um, easiest to trap one of them. So yesterday was the first colder night that we've had this season. It got down into the 40s. It was pretty cold inside the house too. I almost put the heat on, but then I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna put the heat on yet. I'm gonna see how, how much I could tough it out. So um, hopefully it'll warm up today. And I gotta check the weather to see if the nights are gonna be warmer, if yesterday was just an abnormally colder night or what, so. I don't know where the cats go at night. I have no idea where they go. They don't stick around here all night um, on the security cameras. I do see them occasionally like walking in and out of the patio area, but I don't know where they go. Hello, Stella. Okay. Okay, here's Simba, come on. Here's Simba, over here. Here's Stella, over there. Good girl. Good Simba. It's 5 p.m. and here's little Richard and there's Ziggy. She's eating some food. I put the plate of food back there because Grandpa is doing some work around the patio and I've been doing some work around the patio. Oh, and who's in the back? Someone else is in the back corner. Do you see them? I'm not sure who that is. I think it's the one I really don't have a name for yet. So they're eating their food, and this is the ladder where Grandpa was working. So Grandpa was on the ladder, and Richard was hanging out in the corner there just watching him the whole time. And here he is now. Look how brave these cats are. So like when Hydrox and Ditto were here, and Grandma and Grandpa were over, they used to run out of the yard. They wouldn't even come back for dinner until like a while later. But this is the first time that these cats are here while Grandma and Grandpa are here, so they're really brave. Look at this, this is what's going on. So Grandpa's working, he just got on the ladder. And there goes Richard under the fence. But he's gonna come back out because he's very nosy. Grandpa says he should be called Snoopy because he likes to snoop around and see what's going on. So there's Grandpa on the ladder, and there's Ziggy eating food. These cats are brave cats. So this is the custom cat shelter that's been under the house, and it hasn't been pulled out in a long time. I would say maybe over a year. So I just pulled it out, and um, there was actually... Uh, a blanket inside of it and a training pad. They weren't dirty, but I just tossed them out anyway. Um, there is some carpet on the bottom. Looks like I'll need another piece of carpet here. But my goal for today is to um, disconnect this camera and to put a new camera in there. A nice thing about this shelter is that it is big enough for multiple cats. It's actually quite spacious and I think six or even seven cats could easily fit in here. So if all of these little kittens uh, were to go in here at once, I think that they would fit. I mean, it would be tight. They would obviously be cuddling up with each other, but it would work. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. It's 8 a.m. Look at this. Hello. Hello, little Goldie. Hello. We're having a late morning and I'm just putting some food out for the outside cats. I'm heating up some water to mix in because it was in the refrigerator. Who's that, Boo? Who's that, Boo? So here's Boo. And look at this. There's three, that's Ringo. I saw his sister a little while ago. Well, they're all brothers and sisters, but I saw the one 
that has the same patterns as he does. So this is what the cats are getting. They're getting a platter of homemade cat food with some dry food on it. I'm bringing out a second platter of food. The camera battery just died. There's six of them right now. Do you see? There's one, two, three, four, five, six. And they're getting braver, either that or they're just super, super hungry. See, here's little Richard's coming to eat while I'm standing right next to the table. They didn't run under the fence. Here comes Ziggy, she's coming too. So it's getting much colder and they're gonna be burning more calories, so that's why they're probably more hungry. And also, they're hopefully, hopefully getting used to me. That first platter is practically gone. So there's a second platter. And there's, there's these um, bees or wasps flying around. Look at this, guys. Look how close. Look how close. I just put the third platter of food out. So... Here's the one that doesn't really have a name yet. And Grandma Farrell was here yesterday and she thinks I should name her Rhoda. Because it goes with Ringo, like Ringo and Rhoda. So I don't know if that's going to stick. And then today when I was just outside, the one with the white shoes, I don't know. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time naming him. So, they have three platters of food. The inside cats are like, what's going on? Um, but I need to, like I haven't even started getting ready for my day. I literally just got out of bed and, and I was like, I gotta put food out for the cats because it's already, it's already after 8 a.m. and sometimes I put food out earlier than this. I wanna keep them on a schedule um, because um, either tomorrow or the next day, I want to see if I could call and make the first appointment for a spay and neuter. And I don't know when the appointment's going to be. I got to find out um, with regards to the vet, like how backed up they are. And and then we'll, we'll take it from there. It's 8.37 a.m. I just got out of the shower and look at what's going on outside. All of the platters have been licked clean. So that's three platters. That's a full pound of homemade cat food. So that's a whole pint. 16 ounces. So I'm going to get dressed and then I'll open up a can of food or maybe two cans of food and put it out on the platters. There's six hungry cats outside. 8.53 a.m. I just prepared a can of Trader Joe's cat food. They discontinued their cat food so I'm using what I have left. I mix some water into it and I split it up among the two platters and then I filled the rest of the platters with dry food. And as I was doing that, the cat with the white paws literally like walked up to the platter and started eating. And so I was talking to him, I'm like, what's your name? Is your name Wilbur? Is your name Jimmy? What's your name? I'm trying to figure out what it is. It might be Jimmy. Because when I said, is your name Jimmy? All of a sudden his eyes looked really green. And I was like, oh, does that resonate with you? We'll have to see. Now with the other one, I'm thinking it's Shirley. Swirly Shirley. Um, we'll have to see how that goes. She kind of looks like a Shirley. And we'll see. And there's Goldie, but I'm wondering if her name is Dot. Like Dottie. But she's not a very dotty cat. She just has that one gold marking on her forehead. She looks like a combination of black and gold. And Goldie kind of fits with her. So the only one I haven't seen today would be Sammy. The one that reminds me of Sammy Davis Jr. So, so far we have Sammy... Ringo, Little Richard, Ziggy, 
Goldie, Jimmy, and Shirley. How many is that? Did I miss one? Sammy, Ringo, Little Richard, Ziggy, Goldie, Shirley, and Jimmy, potentially. Some of those names are not 100% yet. Potentially. These are potentials. The inside cats still need to eat their breakfast. Here's Stella. She's waiting for some food. Stella got lots of pets this morning. So I was trying to sleep in a little bit. Stella jumped on the bed and she's like, give me pets. I was like, okay, Stella, are you trying, are you trying to tell me I need to wake up? Here's Boo. How you doing, Boo? I have to remind the cats that they are inside cats. And inside cats have a different life than outside cats. Right, Stella? So instead of just eating in the morning, first we need to get brushed in the morning. Right, Stella? First we need to get brushed. And then we can eat after we get brushed. And I also like to give you fresh water in the morning. You like fresh water, right? I don't give the outside cats fresh water right away because it scares them when I take the hose out. Another thing I should mention is that if you are feeding and watering outside cats, it's very important to get a hose that is safe for drinking water. Um, it seems like most of the hoses these days are not made to be drinking water safe, and you definitely want to do that. Boo, you're handsome. Boo, you're handsome, but you got to get brushed. The cats are getting brushed this morning, and what I have recently learned is that if there are pieces of paper on the ground, Boo will actually let me brush him on a piece of paper without walking all around the room. Right, Boo? So, I think from now on I'm always going to have to keep at least one piece of paper on the ground because then it's so much easier to brush Boo. See, like right now he just got up, but he's just moving from paper to paper. Otherwise, he'd be like walking to all his arches and walking back and forth between rooms. See? From one paper to the other. If there was only one paper, he'd probably just stay on the one paper. And here's Simba, and I was just brushing Simba, and he told me something very interesting. So I thought I would grab the camera and share it. So this is their play rug, and this is the layout of it right now. They have these grass mats they like to lay on. They have this grass hunting box they like to play with. They have this toy. It has a ball that goes around. It also has grass in the middle. They like to sit on that more than anything. But Simba just told me the reason why. The reason why is because, see these three scratch and rolls? They don't like them in this position. So the scratch and rolls are here in this part of the rug, and then there's like a scratching rug there, and then here's this unit that I have the TV on. And they say that if they sit in the scratch and rolls here, they can't really see the TV very well, and they just, they don't feel comfortable sitting in the scratch and rolls here. Unless there's a Hot Wheels track, if there's a Hot Wheels track in the middle of this rug, then I'll move these over, then they'll sit there. But for the most part, they say they don't like them in this location, or that's what Simba just told me. He said if I move them to other parts of the rug, then they'll probably use them. He also just told me to make sure that they're kind of separated from each other. Maybe put one in each corner, and he said that would be better. So that's what I will do later. First, I need to get them all brushed and fed. It's 10.24 a.m. I just came outside to clean up some stuff on the patio. And there's three cats here. They were just eating some food. I guess they were cleaning up whatever's left on the plates. It looks, it looks like it's Ziggy, Little Richard, and then Chuck. I don't know what his name is. Jimmy, James, Charles, Charlie, Wilbur. I don't know now. I feel like his name is Chuck. I can't decide on a name for this cat. At least they're happy. Look. They're rubbing on each other. Hey Chuck. Hey Chuck. Is your name Chuck? Like Chuck Taylors? I think he likes that name. Look, he's blinking at me. Hey Chuck. Like Chuck Berry? Look, he's blinking at me. Hey Chuck. Your name Chuck? Are you Chuck? Is that your name? This is Richard. Look at Richard. 
Look, he's laying out. Look at him laying out like this. Oh my gosh, he reminds me so much of Simba. Oh, and look. There's the other one. What's her name? Is that Shirley? Hello, little Shirley. Shirley and Chuck. Is that it? Is that your guys' names? Chuck and Shirley? Richard, Chuck, and Shirley. I don't know, guys. But if you look at Shirley's fur, it's so pretty. It has like gray, but it also has brown, little reddish tones. It's all different colors. Swirly Shirley. Swirly Shirley. Your name's Shirley. Maybe her name is Shirley spelled S-U-R-E-L-Y. Shirley. That would be Shirley. No. I think Shirley is her name. I mean, they're all brothers and sisters. In my mind, they all come from the same litter. They're all like the exact same size, the exact same age. And there's Ziggy. What are you doing, Ziggy? And there's Richard Lane in the irises. Yeah, Shirley's definitely a girl. I just saw her on backside. So this is the dog house that used to house the automatic feeder. So the automatic feeder was kept inside here and the bowl was here. And then the cats used to go in and eat inside. This was actually set up when Boo was living outside, Boo and Hydrox. So there weren't a whole bunch of cats eating at the same time. So it was okay that it was housed in here. And it did really well for years. I mean, I set it up in 2017 and took it down in 2021. So that was like four years. Um, what Grandpa Farrell did yesterday, I don't know if you could see it, but in the back, he popped out an escape route. So there's um, a five by five inch door in the back. Um, so if there's an issue with this shelter, uh, the cat can escape out the back. And if we think back to last winter, I think it was last winter, when um, the other doghouse shelter was here. Um, so it was identical to this. It had the same front door, the same door in the back, um, and then it had a heated shelter inside of it. And Ditto was in the shelter and a crazy raccoon tried attacking him from this front door. And instead of going out the back, which I don't even know if he could have gone out the back because we had so much snow that the back might have been just covered with like too much snow for him to get out the back. Well, he literally came flying out the front. He flew over the raccoon, you know, through the air, landed, I don't know, six feet away and just ran for his life um, around the, the snow banks on the patio and then out of the yard and then the raccoon chased him. That was like the craziest night ever. That was the same night that the raccoons got into the other shelter. So this is the custom cat shelter under the house. It could use some surface cleaning, but yesterday um, we opened it up and I replaced the camera. There's a camera inside here. Um, so it's in really good condition inside. The insulation is fine. The carpeting is fine. We put new carpeting in here uh, before we closed it up. So everything's fresh. I just need to kind of clean off the outside. And there's still... Um, pieces blocking the doors so no one could get in and then there's two vestibules under the house so one vestibule goes here the other vestibule goes there if you're not familiar with how vestibules work they help to block the flow of air so when i used to live in new york city for example and we used to go out to restaurants or a store or wherever in the winter time they'd put up a vestibule in front of the front door because a lot of these were really small restaurants for example or a really small store and if you opened up the door all kinds of cold air would come in and then it would really affect the temperature inside but if they had a vestibule it would definitely help stop the flow of cold air it's basically like a door and a little foyer area and then the main door to go in and that's really helped uh, with this shelter and the cats don't mind it's like the cats go through like a little tunnel to get in. So um, this is not set up yet, but it's pretty much ready to go. This is one of the new cameras. So one of the old cameras used to be here, and this used to be a little bit taller. 
So we actually lowered this, moved it closer to the shelter. It's closer to the shelter now, so maybe it'll get a better view. I don't know how the new cameras are gonna work yet. Also, we lowered the solar panels so the cats can get a better view out of the windows that are above the solar panels. Um, from a cat's eye view, the solar panels were kind of blocking their view of the patio. So hopefully by lowering them a little bit, the cats will get a better view out the window. So this is the first year that I had the patio uh, table and chairs on this side of the patio. And it's actually nice having them here. But I think what I'm going to do is move them back to here where they used to be. And then... Um, this is where I have the feeding table and the automatic feeder so far and it's been working really well This has been working really well. This is a three by three foot table So 36 inches by 36 inches and we took one of the legs off yesterday. So it actually only has seven legs right now um, and the legs are 15 inches high and this is fine for uh, feeding cats under the table. There's two platters under here. A lot of cats can fit under this table. Easily four cats, five, six cats. And um, if it rains, this helps shelter them. And also then, this is where the automatic feeder is. So this is the blue tub. It's a blue recycled tub from um, previous years. It's still new. It was put out very recently. It has the automatic feeder housed inside of it. And then to keep the raccoons from getting into it, um, there is a large piece of plywood put on top of it. I think it's a two by two, two foot by two foot piece of plywood. It actually extends out this way and the table's kind of over it. And then there's two really heavy pavers on top and that's to keep the raccoons out. When there was only one paver on top, the raccoons were actually able to slide the paver over and get into the feeder. But since there's two pavers on top now, they have not been able to do that. And also the table itself is um, on top of the plywood. So I measured it so that there would be overlap. So then everything that is underneath is protected from rain. So if it does rain, then the cats can still eat out of this feeder. And since it's not in the doghouse, they can access it from multiple directions. So you could actually have several cats eating at the same time. I still have this Rubbermaid shelter underneath the house. The fact that it's underneath the house has really helped it last a lot longer than if it was out in the elements. So I have to go through that, clean it up, but it's still there and it's still usable. And the other thing we did was run new power lines into the greenhouse. So I went and I got a heavy duty extension cord to power the greenhouse. Last year I just used whatever extension cord that I had and I I think it was either a light or medium and uh, this one's heavy duty it's 12 gauge uh, 15 amps so this should be enough to power whatever I use in the greenhouse through the winter so I have to clean up these plants and reorganize these shelves but you can see all these Christmas lights last year I had two or three strings of these Christmas lights and they kept this greenhouse from freezing and they kept all the plants alive. Um, I was pleasantly surprised at how well they worked to keep the plants alive. My Meyer lemon tree thrived and so did all of the geraniums. So I'm hoping to have enough room in here to put the lemon tree and the geraniums which are much bigger than they were last year. Um, I don't know if I'm going to need to move out one of these shelves. These shelves are from my previous greenhouse and they fit perfectly in here so I kept them in here. And then I just have extension cords um, running to um, the outside extension cord that powered. Uh, last year they powered these Christmas lights and then when it got really really cold out I actually used the heater from my dehydrator because it only uses about 300 watts. And I use that in here also just to keep um, the frost out of here and it worked. It worked really well. So um, I'm hoping to do that again. But the issue does arise with regards to TNRing these cats. So right now I'm filming this. It's like the last week of September. So that gives me October, November. It gives me two months to really uh, work with before before winter gets here at like December. And there's seven cats that I'm dealing with. So if I did one cat a week, that would be pretty much two months. If I could do two cats a week, that could lessen uh, the amount of time. But 
you know, it's all a question of being able to get them into traps. So this is the Meyer lemon tree. I'd probably prune this back before I put it back in the greenhouse, but um, it does have lemons growing on it. They're just starting to turn. And if this does not go in the greenhouse, um, it's not gonna survive the winter. And I can't put this inside because there's a bunch of critters and stuff living in this dirt because it's been outside all summer. So I need to find someplace warm for it and it's not gonna survive in the garage. So it's really its only chance of survival is the greenhouse. And then here's one of the geraniums. This geranium is easily two or three times the size that it was when I took it out of the greenhouse. So I would like to save these. I don't know if they could be cut down to be put in the greenhouse, but the pot is quite big. There's actually some catnip growing in here, which I'm hoping to harvest soon. So there's this one, and then there's this one. This one did really good. I feel like it's a shame to let these die, so I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with these. I had this one in the greenhouse last year. This is a small one. And then this is my rosemary. I had that in the greenhouse. It's not doing really well here, but maybe if I put it in the greenhouse, it'll do better. Then this is some mint. Mint could stay outside. And then this is the other thing that got done yesterday. So I've had one of these motion lights back here since I moved in. The people that own this house before me put it up and it never really worked right. So like at night when there's movement, the light is supposed to go on and it never really did. So we put this new one up and last night it was going on it felt like every five or ten minutes because if it wasn't a cat walking through it was a skunk or a possum or a raccoon it was like really almost constantly on and nowadays um these lights are like a really blue type of light they're not like the incandescent lights that are much more natural like warm yellow light and um so these are more like the color of daylight and the issue with that is when I first took Stella into the vet to have her spayed, it was the end of December. I remember talking to the vet and saying I thought it was strange that she was going into heat in the middle of winter. I mean, it was December 29th when she went into heat. And I took her to be spayed a few days later once she got over her heat cycle. And what they told me is that it's actually dependent upon light and that when a cat gets more light than darkness in the course of their day like when the days are longer then that triggers their heat cycles so from like march 21st through september 21st the days are longer there's more day than night there are more hours of sunlight than more hours of darkness so that will actually trigger heat cycles in cats so when i saw how many times this was going off last night and how much light it was giving off because it's really bright i came out here today and I loosen the bulbs. It does not have an off switch, so I had to loosen the bulbs and hopefully it won't go on again. And I'm just gonna deal with this area like I have been dealing with this area um, with portable lights and when I need to. So I do not need to be triggering these cats into heat right now um, before I could get them spayed and neutered. I don't know what's going on here. I thought those were two hawks, but they sounded like crows. They're really big birds. It's 3 p.m. I was sitting downstairs and all of a sudden Boo comes running down the stairs and jumping up to the top of the cat tower downstairs. And I was like, what is he looking at? Well, this is what he's looking at. This is little Richard. And he was just laying by the cat shelter, the dog house. Boo just jumped off the cat tower downstairs and he's gonna be coming upstairs soon, I can hear it. Yep, he's by my feet now. So there's little Richard just hanging out. Maybe he's looking for dinner, it's still early. It's three o'clock, um, but he did just remind me that we are supposed to get some pretty severe thunderstorms this afternoon. I think they're supposed to get here around 4.30. So I'm gonna go check the weather apps and look at the radar, and if that is the case, then I'm gonna give them dinner early. So then they're set. We have to remember outside cats have much bigger appetites before any kind of storm or bad weather. It's 7.37 p.m. Look who's at the back door. It's little Richard. Hello, Richard. How are you? So I just looked out the kitchen window to see if the cats had eaten the food on the platters and I saw a skunk eating. And then I saw a cat 
moving around in the darkness. And I was like, who is it? And it was Richard. Then I watched him walk toward the shelter under the house. The next thing I know, he came up to the back door. So I'll put some more food out. Here's Boo. What you doing, Boo? I told Boo he could take some time off because he's working too much lately. I told Boo he's a workaholic and he can't be a workaholic because, you know, I don't want him to burn himself out. So I gave him some time off. That's why he was hanging out in the living room. We were watching TV for a little while. And now he's looking at Richard. Um, Richard's afraid of the camera. Obviously, he's very cautious, too. He doesn't want to go near the skunk. The skunk is still near the feeding table. So maybe I'll put some food out over here and see if he wants it over there. Actually, now there's two skunks near the feeding table. The problem with having skunks out there, like if I go out there and they get scared, they could potentially spray, which I don't need. So maybe I'll just wait for the, the skunks to leave. Richard is now under this little feeding table. There's a skunk. Yep. Oh no. Now he's walking away because he saw the skunk. So maybe I won't put some food out. Maybe he's just exploring. And there goes the skunk getting a drink of water. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Pharaohs. It's 7.48 a.m. And I put two platters of food out for the cats because two of them were hanging around. Ziggy and Ringo were looking for food. So one platter has some homemade food on it. It's the platter farthest away from me. And the other platter has a can of food. I'm giving them the cans of food that the cats don't like um, that I've had in the house. So this is a good use for that. And the cat to the right of the table, yesterday I was calling that cat Shirley. I was like, maybe its name is Shirley, Swirly Shirley. But today, I'm thinking maybe its name is Eva, like little Eva, because now that one is the smallest of the cats. It used to be little Richard was the smallest of the cats, but since I've been feeding them, these cats are, you know, getting good and healthy. So now she's the smallest of the cats. Like she was the last one to come around. She's the last one I ever saw. So I'm wondering if her name should be little Eva. I have little Richard and uh, Ziggy Stardust, Sammy Davis Jr. Um, if the other one's called Chuck, his name would be Chuck Berry. Um, then we just have Goldie um, because she looks like she has a gold coin on her head. And who am I missing? Ringo. We have Ringo. And Eva would fit with them, little Eva. Well, we'll see how that works today. We'll see if that fits her. It's 8.06 a.m. and let me tell you what just happened. So I noticed the two platters were completely empty. So I put some more food together for the cats. And the minute I opened the back door, four of the cats went just running across the patio to the table. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is new for them. So I went over to the table and I was filling both of the platters with food and they were just like right here watching me. Uh, four of them now, I think there's five of them. Um, so it was Goldie, Richard, uh, Ziggy, and then the one with the white shoes, which I don't really have a name for right there. And let me tell you what happened. So the one with the white shoes turned around and I got a look at the backside of that cat, I think it's a girl. I think the reason why none of the names have stuck is because it's a girl. Just from what I saw today, I think it's a girl. I could be wrong. I need another look. But from what I saw today, I'm pretty sure it's a girl, which would make sense why none of the names stuck. So maybe 
Maybe Charlie. I mean, I don't want to call a girl Chuck. Now I got to figure this out again. Maybe, I mean, if it's a girl, then like it's named Nancy. Its name is Nancy. Because Nancy Sinatra is saying these boots are made for walking and see the white boots on the cat. So if this cat is indeed female, its name is Nancy. Because it has white boots. And those boots are made for walking. All right, can we get a look? I can't zoom in any farther. So when I edit this video, I'll be able to get a look, but on this little tiny screen on my camera, I can't really see. From what I saw, that looked like a female. And then that solves the name problem, it's Nancy. And that's why the names didn't resonate. So that would be Nancy. Little Eva. That's little Eva. Um, under here is... I think that's Goldie and Richard. I don't know. It's hard to keep track. Um, anyway, I'm going to let them finish. And i got to take care of the inside cast. It is 8.49 a.m. And I just went outside to put more food on the platters. And as I was putting food on the platters... Nancy walked right up to the table, if that's her name, and she was watching me. So um, a few more cats came around, and I went into the garage and I took out the trap. See the trap on the bottom of the screen? That's where I put it. Um, they told me just put it outside for a few days and don't set it, don't do anything, just put it out there so the cats would get used to it being around. So that's what I did. Scared the cats away, of course, because it makes jangly noises it's made out of metal later on i'm going to go outside and i'm going to hose it down and just make sure there are no scents on it like it doesn't smell like any other cats or anything that's the plan for today it's 11:25 a.m right now here's boo he's been relaxing in his office in the cat tower this cat tower needs to be cleaned out i've been sitting not too far away at the dining room table trying to get some work done and here's Simba. Simba's relaxing in the cat tower over here. So one of the things that I had to do today was call the animal hospital um, to do the TNRs for the feral cats outside. And um, I got a few tickets for that from one of the local rescues. And the earliest they could get me in was the end of December. That's three months from now. I was completely shocked that those were the earliest appointments that they had. So I took the appointments. So I have two appointments for the end of December, but I have seven cats that need to be spayed and neutered. And I would really like to get them done before the weather gets so cold because usually at the end of December, it's like snowy and cold and just really bad weather. So I ended up contacting another local vet practice that the rescue had told me about and I talked to them and they said they could not do any spay or neuter procedures without a certificate from a rescue. So unfortunately the rescue that I talked to could only give me the two certificates because that's all she had. She's dealing with so many cats. So I then had to contact um, another group that provides TNR certificates. I had to do it online and um, it was quite costly so I ordered four certificates and it was almost it was almost $700 for the four certificates so hopefully those will get here soon once I have those certificates then I could book some appointments with this other vet and then hopefully try to get these cats spayed and neutered before the weather gets really really bad in the winter uh, versus having to wait for like animal control to come and help or um, these other tickets to kick in. So fingers crossed everything will go well. And the vet that I talked to said once I get their certificates, they should be able to get me in for quicker appointments and I wouldn't have to wait that long. So fingers crossed everyone. Please send positive thoughts. I know by the time you're seeing this, um, it it's probably going to be a month from now and who knows what kind of situation it'll be but um, I'm just documenting um, this entire journey. I just came outside and the cats were somewhere around the shelter here. It's really interesting ever since grandpa put the back door in they're showing a lot more interest in it. 
What I'm thinking of doing is actually putting some straw inside of it and seeing if they use that um, and seeing how that goes. So I've used straw in one of those Rubbermaid tub shelters in the past and it did not go well at all. The straw got like all moldy. It was like black mold and it it got wet. It didn't stay dry. People say it stays dry. It got really wet um, and it became home to a lot of insect nests like spiders made nests in it and and my concern was that the local mice were gonna make a nest in it um, even with cats around you know that is a potential I'm thinking about just using straw in there for a little while just to see what the cats do um, and how they react to it I'd have to go out and buy some straw um, I'm just watching the cats interact right now so I have a platter of food that I'll be putting out um, this is some canned food it's the wholehearted turkey pate cats inside are not really crazy about it along with some crunchies on top so the one nice thing about feeding these cats outside is that I'm able to use the canned food that I have that the inside cats don't really like look at this look 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 at that hello Nancy I wonder if it's a girl show me your backside again so I can get a better look yeah, put your tail up. Put your tail up. Put your tail up, Nancy. Nancy, put your tail up. There goes Ringo. Nancy, let me see your backside. Hey, Nancy. How are you? You okay? You're pretty. You look like Stella. You remind me of Stella. Yeah, maybe you're like a distant relative. You okay? And here's Richard. So Richard was the smallest of all the cats when I started feeding them. Like when they first came around, he was the smallest. And now I'm wondering if he's actually the alpha of the bunch. Look at this. I'm so close, guys. I'm probably two feet away, not even. Okay, I'll go in so you could eat. Hello. Hello. It's 5 p.m. I just came outside. There's Richard. He's hissing at me. Hey, Richard. How are you? You got pretty eyes. You have very pretty eyes. You want some dinner? Let me give you some food. Oh, and who's back there? It looks like little Eva is back in the corner. So I also just came outside to measure this trap. Um, this is the trap that I've used for Hydrox and Ditto. Um, I just measured it. It's 36 inches, which is a pretty good size. It's about uh, 12 inches tall and 10 inches wide and I'm thinking about ordering another one um, and having two so maybe I'd be able to do two at the same time instead of just one at a time if I could do two at a time that would really greatly reduce um, the amount of time that I would have to go back and forth to a vet and also the amount of time it's going to take me to get these cats spayed and neutered and when I took Stella to get her spayed um, I took Simba at the same time. I did not have an appointment for Simba, but I was able to get him into a carrier and I just took them both and I was like, can you also do Simba? And they're like, yeah, no problem. That was back in the very beginning of 2017. So it was a very different situation. There was no vet shortage like there is today. Uh, there were no crazy long waits for appointments. So um, it was different back then. So that's why I'm thinking if I get another trap, maybe I could just make an appointment for like two cats on the same day and hopefully actually get two cats. So this is a Tomahawk live trap and I did get this on their website, livetrap.com. I'm going to see if um, I could order another one just to have a, two of them.
Guys, so close. So close to me. Like I could reach out and touch this cat. Some more? Some more? Good? You like that? These are uh, salmon flavored. Savory salmon flavor. You want another one? Want more salmon flavor? I'm gonna throw some farther away to see if she'll turn around or he'll turn around. I think this one's a girl. This one seems more petite than Ringo and Richard. Would you like some more? Want some more? The phone's ringing inside. I just put three of the treats down really close to me. Let's see if she'll come and get them. She looked at the camera, she's afraid of the camera. She has smaller paws than Ringo and Richard. They have larger paws. Look at this, so close to me guys, look how close. Less than two feet away. You're so pretty. What a pretty girl. I wonder if it's a girl or a boy. Lift up your tail. Lift up your tail so we can see what's going on. Okay, good. And look at what's going on here. They're almost done. I'm going to put another platter on the other side of the patio and I'll uh, bring more food out for this platter. Can you see there's like a wasp on it or a bee? Meanwhile, at the back door, there's Stella and Boo. Stella's very interested. Who's that baby, Stella? Who's that baby? She looks like you. She looks like you, Stella. What's going on over there? What's going on? Look at Nancy. I'm going to call that cat Nancy until I know for sure whether it's a girl or a boy. Who's she with? Who's she with? She's with Richard? Oh my gosh, I hope she's not in heat. They might just be playing. Oh, who's this? Is this Ringo? I think that's Ringo. Maybe it's Eva. No, it's Ringo. It looks like Ringo. Ringo and Eva look a lot alike, but Eva's fur 
has more colors. Yeah, that's Ringo. <laughs> I think they're really excited because I'm going to be putting some food out soon. They're very pretty cats, aren't they? They look very happy. You want some food, guys? I put out some fresh water today and, uh, you know, I'm definitely making progress. Got some appointments going. I ordered some of the spay neuter certificates today and I have another uh, animal hospital lined up, so that's good. These traps are a decent size and the goal is to, you know, pretty much immobilize the cat, just let them um, sleep and relax. So I'm thinking maybe what I would do is I would just put the traps inside in Boo's room and uh, just let them stay there for a little while and uh, see how that goes and then bring the traps outside. So today the goal was just to put the trap out, not open it up, just put it here and let the cats, you know, be calm and safe around it. Either tomorrow or the next day, the goal is to have the trap open, not triggered at all, just to have it open. They could go in and out if they want, or to even put some food in there, just have it so it doesn't trigger and shut on them, um, to maybe wire it open. And then eventually, on the day that I want to do the trapping, um, they'll be more used to it. I'm really just taking it one day at a time, playing everything by ear, just trying to be as prepared as I can possibly be. Hello, Richard. There's no zoom on the camera right now. Hello, Richard. How are you? How are you? You okay? I'm kind of tempted to go get one of the shower brushes and see if I could brush him, but it'd probably freak him out. You want some food? You see Ringo back there on the grass? Here's Boo, he's watching me. What you doing, Boo? What you doing, Boo? Let me in. Let me in, Boo. I just opened a bag of Temptations. I've had these in my cat treat stash since the cats were sick back in February when they were not eating and they had no appetite and I bought some of these just to try to see if they would eat them. I just want to see what happens if I toss a few here under the table. Is he going to eat them? Maybe they'll get closer to me without being scared. Oh, there's Ringo coming. Be nice, be nice, there's more you can share. Okay, that was a mistake, I didn't mean to throw it at him. I was gonna throw it past him, there you go. They're so cute, there he goes. Now they both got some. So my goal right now is just to try to be a relaxed presence near them. Look how pretty their fur is, guys. Do you see how pretty their fur is? And I'm doing this so they also, you know, kind of get used to me a bit more. To know I'm not going to hurt them. Maybe this will help them relax a little around me, become a little friendlier. They really look like little tigers right now. Hello, Richard. Come on, Ringo. Sorry.
All right, so I just walked away from the camera, which is why they were so close to it. I'm gonna put some more treats down. So what I did that time was I backed away from the camera but not as far as the first time I wanted to see if they would still come close to the camera. I was only maybe three or four feet away versus you know seven or eight feet away. So I'm gonna go in and put some food together for them. It's 534. I'm bringing another platter of food out. I don't know where Nancy went. I don't see her anywhere. There's Richard and Ringo. It's 6.40 p.m. and I've been looking into getting another one of these traps. And while I'm doing that, I just realized that there are extension pieces for this trap. So I can buy another, um, it's like a cage piece that um, you can connect. So there's a connector that attaches to this end. And then there's another cage piece. It looks like it's maybe half um, the length so maybe like 18 inches and you can attach that and you can actually put a litter box in the um, attached cage so the cat would have all this area as a recovery uh, cage or recovery crate area and then um, a few inches of like a tunnel and then it would have a litter box area and this separate cage can also be used to transfer cats so I'm thinking about getting that um, so getting those two extra pieces for this trap and then they do sell like the whole kit um, this trap with the two extra pieces um, for like one price so I'm thinking of getting that also that way I would have two traps um, two connectors two like litter box rooms and I'm thinking about getting handles they do sell like padded handles for this because these are you know these are thin metal, they're not the most comfortable things. I'm thinking about getting the padded handles, and then they also do sell pads for the bottom. So when I've used this before for Ditto, I put like uh, training pads on the bottom, but that's really not the most comfortable on a cat's feet, especially if they're gonna spend several days in one of these recovering. So that's why I'm thinking of also getting, they sell mats to fit in the bottom. So when I purchased this trap, I didn't realize that there are so many accessories for it and options and expansions and I think that's really cool so maybe that would be the plan so if I was able to get two of these I could easily set up two of these in Boo's room I would very easily be able to just uh, take them back outside in the trap now I do have like um, it's like a fork um, that you put through here so if the cat is in like one half of it you can put the fork here and then you could open up the other end, like put food and water, um, you know, change the litter, do whatever you need to do. Um, so it's useful that way. So um, maybe that will be the plan. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. Oh. 
It's 8 a.m. I'm putting some food together for the kittens outside. You can see the size difference. Do you see how big Boo is compared to the uh, the kitten outside? I think that that's Ziggy out there. And I'm getting a better look at her face, and she looks okay. She doesn't look like she has mange. She just looks like those are the different colors of her fur, like the black and the orange. It's really pretty. They're really pretty torty cats. Boo is just meowing at her. I'm not going to open that door because issues would follow. I don't trust Boo. Right now he's claiming his property, rubbing up against the door frame. Boo's about twice the size of Ziggy. And I do have to say that these kittens outside are definitely, they definitely look like they're getting bigger and they're filling out more, which is good. I mean, they're probably also getting their winter coat because the, the temperature is falling. Um, but they do look a lot better than they did before I started feeding them. Like, they were way skinnier. You can really see their, their bones, especially the bones, like, above their tail on their back. Those bones were, like, really protruding. I don't want to scare you. I'm going to put food out. Look at this. Here comes two more. There's Goldie. And there's Nancy. Goldie. Hello, Nancy. I still want to make sure you're a Nancy. And who's this? Little Eva? There's Little Eva. So we got four cats on the patio. All the girls. Look, four girls. I think these are the four girls. The torties, you could be pretty sure those are girls because, you know, the vast percentage of them are girls. It's very rare that you have a male. Um... And the other two, I think, are girls. Oh, and there's one in the back. Who's that? Ringo in the back? So we have five present right now. Hello, Nancy. You look like a girl. That's why none of the that's why none of the boy names stuck to you. So they look like happy cats. Oh look, and there's little Richard. So now we have five here and one in the back that's six. The only one we're missing is Sammy. Where's Sammy Davis Jr.? Where's he at? So look, they're starting to train themselves, guys. There's a reason why I'm just standing out the door and waiting before I put the food out. It's just because I want to see what they do. And they are definitely training themselves, which is good. Cats are smart. You know, the first goal is to let them know that I'm not here to harm them. I'm going to put the trap out. They'll, they will probably all run away. First I'm going to put the food out, then I'll put the trap out. I'm not going to open the trap yet. I ordered more traps yesterday with the extension pieces. And I'm going to hope that the animal hospital will take more than one at a time if that's possible and if not um, it's good for me to have more than one trap because if one of the cats is recovering in a trap and let's say they're going to recover for several days or a week then i'll have another trap to use um, the issue obviously is how much trust they will lose uh, in this yard in me once i start trapping them and also um you know, will the others go in the trap? Um, the first few are going to be the easiest, and the last few are going to be the hardest because cats are smart and they know what's going on. So, I just put two platters of food down. So, there's two different cans of food one's Trader Joe's, and then the other one is from Stop and Shop. And there's some um, Blue Wilderness salmon crunchies on top. And, uh, yeah, the cats came. Once they heard me open the back door, a few of the cats came running to the table. There's little Richard. And the other one was Goldie. And I think, who's there? Oh, Goldie and Zagir are there. They look very happy today. And, uh, yeah. It's quite cooler out today right now. It's probably in the mid-50s. 
So there's little Eva walking toward the food and that is Ringo in the back. You're a pretty girl. She's the littlest one now. And look who's eating it, Ziggy and Goldie. And I have a really good look at Ziggy's face and I'm not really seeing signs of mange, so that's good. They're pretty girls. There's, is that Ringo? There's Richard. All right, I'm gonna go so two other cats can eat from this side of the plate. It's about 8.30 a.m. I just looked outside and there's Sammy. So I had put a third plate of food out because I figured, well, there's six cats that I saw. And here's number seven. So it looks like they all got some food this morning. Each platter has a can of food, a 5.5 ounce can, along with some crunchies on top. So they have plenty of food that should give them plenty of energy for their day, replenish the calories they burnt overnight because of the colder weather. And yeah, they're all happy cats now. And the inside cats got brushed and they got fresh water and we're having playtime right now. And this is what Simba just did while I was showing you Sammy outside. Do you see what he does to these toys? He chews the fishing line in half and he breaks the toy off. These are my last two wands. So either I'm going to have to order more or I'm going to have to learn how to, um, how to use fishing line and how to attach new fishing lines to these toys and these, these wands. But this is why I always try to keep the string out of Simba's mouth. But literally what it only took a minute or two for me to show you Sammy outside. And that's what Simba did. Here's Simba. He's on the kitchen chair and here's the toy on the floor underneath him. I just looked outside and I saw little Richard jump on top of this cat shelter, like on the roof of it. He's trying to get in the bushes now. I don't know what he's trying to do. He better not be trying to scratch that tree because these trees cannot die. I have to go outside. So there's some markers on these trees. I guess the people that bought these trees and installed them never took these off. I'm taking them off. It's 1.45 p.m. and Simba just vomited a hairball up on this grass mat in the living room. So I took it outside and I hosed it down, cleaned it up really well. The nice thing about these mats is the back is like rubber, so it didn't soak through to the rug underneath it. And another nice thing is that you can just bring them outside and hose them down. Um, I did wipe it down and clean it with the cleaner that I used, but I just wanted to make sure it was really clean, so I took it out here and hosed it down. And then this is what I did with the trap. So uh, the trap has been out here this morning, and I just um, washed it really well, sanitized it, and um, this back door opened, so I actually took the back door off, and it's just laying on top here. It is attached, so it's not going to go anywhere. And uh, what I want to do, I need to go run some errands right now, and I'm probably going to stop off at the Dollar Tree because they sell um, small pieces of carpet. And that's what I'm going to use in this one. Um, they do sell trap mats, but they're like $20 each. And I looked at them and I was like, well, that's kind of really similar in size to the small pieces of carpet that you could get at the Dollar Tree. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a piece. I'm going to cut it down to fit the inside. And I'll put it in there. And then I'll put a bowl of food in here. And um, we'll see if anyone goes in to eat the food. I'm, I'm not setting it. I just want to see if they're comfortable going in and out, you know, not feeling like they're going to be caught or trapped in it. I'm still waiting for the certificates to come in the mail so I could schedule uh, spay and neuters. And I'm also waiting for the other trap and the attachments to come. So here under the house, I have some of these old pieces of carpet. These are from the Dollar Tree. I think what I'm going to do is go buy some new ones. I saw that they had new ones there. Hopefully they're still there. Uh, same exact size. The ones that I saw they had were like bright blue. Um, I'm just thinking to update uh, the rugs. So they're fresh, they're clean, they're new, and they're not going to smell like any other cats, like Hydrox or Ditto or anything like that. So there's one, two pieces there and I could fit another one, two, three pieces. So I think I need to get like five pieces in total. So it'll be less than $10 to get those rugs. 
It is 6 p.m. and this is what's going on with the doghouse shelter. So I put a bunch of straw in it. I also found a square piece of carpet in the garage that had not been used before. So I put the carpet on the bottom and I put the straw inside. This is not a winter shelter yet because there is no insulation in it. What I would want to do to make this a winter shelter is put insulation on the bottom insulation on the sides. Um, there's already insulation on the roof um, because there's like a piece that goes across here. And um, so I'd want to uh, insulate um, the inside of the shelter and um, I think it would be a lot warmer. I'd also hang some um, clear uh, door flaps on the front and on the back. And um, that's what I would do. Right now, the size of the shelter could easily house four of these cats, potentially six, if they all crammed in there and cuddled with each other. I mean, it's plenty big for one cat, plenty big for two cats, three cats could fit comfortably, four cats could fit comfortably. Anything more than that might be a little tight, but it is an option for them. And since it's not getting too cold at night yet, um, I'm curious to see if they're gonna use it. Like, are they gonna explore it? When I was putting straw in the Rubbermaid shelter that I had it in when Stella, Splash, and Zimba were living outside, Splash and Zimba had a really fun time like playing with the straw. Um, but then once I set it up as a shelter, nobody wanted to use it really. So, um, yeah, that's why I'm just going to put it here now. I don't know. I mean, chances are a skunk or a possum or someone else is going to move in. Like, I don't know. So hopefully not a bunch of mice or rodents. So we'll see what happens. But again, this is just temporary right now. Just to give them a warm place to hang out if they wanted to. Uh, not that they have to. I don't know where they go uh, at night or where they actually seek shelter. So, um, yeah, that's where this stands. Otherwise, today I did go into the Dollar Tree and I got three of these for the traps. I just need to cut them down. So these are about, they're about two feet long. They're a little bit too wide, but these are really easy just to cut with scissors. And um, that's why I got these. They're dollar twenty-five each. And then these are the square ones that they had they didn't have any other colors um, so they only had this bright blue uh, so I got five of these to put under the house so if the weather's nice tomorrow maybe I'll do that oh my gosh what are you kidding me hey out out come on out he's going into he just went into the lawnmower oh there he goes out I can't believe he came inside like that. So I'm out here by the trap and I just cut off a piece of this rug. It's super easy to cut with a pair of scissors and it does have these lines you could follow. So I'm just kind of measuring, measuring it against the trap and then I'm going to, I'm going to cut it down. And if I need to make it smaller, I could make it smaller, but I think, I think this will be fine.
and there it is I just put it inside it is like a perfect fit so that's really good right now it is above the trip tray because this is the back door but when I use it it would be on that side and it's just it's small enough to fit so that it does not go over the the trip tray so um, yeah that just saved me like $20 per mat these cats are so funny because they're so nosy. So I came inside the garage to put the spare pieces of carpet away. And I look out the window and there's like three cats sniffing around. Look, you see? They're sniffing around. Are they going to go in? There's Goldie. What I'd like to do is put a plate of food in there. It's not set to trap them, so it's not going to catch any cats. Richard's on that chair. He wants to be Alpha. And there's the two torties. They're really starting to get more comfortable around me, which is good. They're waiting for dinner. Look at this, guys. Look. I'm right near the table, and it's Richard. Hey, Richard. How are you? I'm so close. How are you, Richard? You hanging out? Don't worry, I'm not going to bother you. You're pretty. So tomorrow morning I have expect the majority of the straw to be on the ground outside of this shelter. I just put two platters of food underneath the feeding table. And there is Goldie coming to eat. And there's Richard. I think Richard's going to end up being a big cat just by the size of his paws. His paws are way bigger than the Tordy's paws, and way bigger than Nancy's paws. And there's Nancy. I don't know where she's been. I also put a plate of dry food in the trap, so we'll see if anyone goes in there and eats the food. So it's 6.30 p.m. and there are five cats eating. I see the two Tordy's, uh, Richard and... It looks like Ringo and Little Eva. And Nancy walked off the patio toward the driveway a minute or two ago. So I don't know where she went. And I don't know where Sammy is. So, But there's five eating and look, they fit nicely under the table. The inside cats are eating their food. They're having homemade raw food for dinner with their favorite toppers. Boo's having Stella and Chewy's salmon and chicken. Stella's having the same topper. Simba is having the primal fish because it's sardines and anchovies. He likes that, but then he also wanted two or three dried sardines on his. And Splash is having some instinct raw bites on his, and I don't know why he didn't finish it and ran upstairs. I don't know why he did that. Look at this, look at this. It's 641. I just came upstairs to give Splash his food in the living room because that's where he is and look one of the torties walked into the trap they're eating the food this is what we want we want them to be comfortable around the trap so then when it's actually set they'll go in it when it's actually set I will be putting like towels over it and making it more comfortable and secure but right now this is really what we want we just want them to get comfortable around it yep someone's in it eating obviously the minute it snaps shut and there's a cat caught in it they're they're pretty much all gonna freak out i would think so the two platters underneath the table are empty. So I'm gonna put together some more food. They've been averaging maybe three platters a meal. Where's Goldie? There she is, she's stretching. Um, for breakfast today they had three platters. And they just had two platters. The food in the trap is like half gone. So there's the plate of crunchies in the trap. They ate some of them. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. 
It's about 8 a.m. And there's Goldie. I don't see any of the other cats around. I don't know where they are. I saw a few walk across the patio earlier this morning, but I don't know where they went. They could be having breakfast somewhere else. I don't know. But I put two platters of food out, so there's a can of wet food on each platter. Um, it's the Trader Joe's turkey and giblets that the inside cats don't like and unfortunately it has been discontinued by Trader Joe's and there are a bunch of crunchies on the plates and I put some wellness chicken pate in the trap it's one of Boo's favorites and the other day I put a paver on top of this table to try to straighten it out uh, because it was quite warped and uh, it's getting straightened out now so that's good and there goes Goldie she's gonna eat it's quite chilly out I would say maybe it's like 50 degrees out maybe even in the high 40s it's quite cold and there's the shelter with the straw and uh, it looks like no one touched it overnight which is good it would be nice if the cats used it they can use it if they want to but i'm just happy that like raccoons or something didn't wreck it um i'm gonna see if i have some clear plastic for the doors and um, I am in the process of getting some insulation for this. So um, over the next few days, um, I'll have the insulation. I'll be able to install it. And uh, yeah, everything's moving forward. So look who we have here. It looks like Nancy's eating some food along with Ringo and little Eva. That's what it looks like from here. I could be wrong. Maybe one of them is Richard, but it looks like... Looks like Eva. They look very hungry. So there's four cats eating. If they finish all that, I'll put another platter out. It's 8, 10 a.m. Let's see what's going on outside. So it looks like they almost finished both plates of food. There's still some food on the plate on the right. And no one has touched the food in the trap. I put one more can of food outside. I mixed in some homemade salmon broth and I split it up between the two platters along with some more crunchies and then that will be it for the cats this morning. That's a good amount of food so for six or seven cats it's three cans along with some dry food and that seems to be a good amount. And when I went outside little Eva was finishing off what was left on one platter and then she ran to the back corner. I don't know if she's still there. Hopefully she'll come back and finish eating. It's 5 p.m. And there's the plate that's in the trap. So I took Boo's leftover breakfast and I put it outside in the trap a few hours ago. And I took out the plate that was in there and I had to run to the post office just now uh, before they closed. But before I left, maybe 10, 15 minutes ago, I looked outside and little Richard was sitting by this trap. So I think he was the one that went in and ate the food, but it's a good sign. And also the plate was pushed farther back into the trap. So that's good also. It's 5.30 p.m. I just looked outside and look at this. That's little Richard. He's sleeping on the patio chair. I'm happy he's getting some good rest. I think he's been hanging out waiting for dinner to be served. But what I'm doing now is like I just started making some homemade raw food. so. It's going to be at least a half hour before I put any food out for the cats. I'm going to let him sleep. Now is a good time for him to sleep before all the other critters come out for the evening. So this is the homemade raw food I just made for the outside cats, uh, pretty much. The inside cats can eat it too. Um, it's probably a little bit less than 10 pounds of food. And I just brought a platter of it outside. Uh, there's some crunchies on it too. And Richard jumped off the chair and then he hissed at me. That's what he does. Like he gets a little bit afraid. Um, so he hisses at me and then I put the food down and he went straight over to eat it. So that's good. I'm going to put one more platter down and then I'm going to pack up the rest for the freezer and get the inside cats fed. It's 6.50 p.m. And look who's here. It's the all white cat. I've never seen this cat come around during daylight. So right now the sun's just about to go down. I've only seen this cat on security camera footage from the middle of the night. Wow. 
it's very rare to see an all white cat around here. I've kind of named this one Casper just because every time I see it on the security camera footage, it almost looks like a ghost cat on the night vision. It's obviously not, it's a real cat. It's a big cat too. That's one thing I noticed on the security cameras. I was like, wow, that's a big cat. And even now seeing the cat, it's a big cat. It's probably the size of the inside cats. Like right now, if one of the kittens was outside, um, you'd see that it's about twice the size of like Little Richard or Ringo or any of them. It's a really striking looking cat. And it's so nice and white, so it's obviously taking care of itself. I don't know where it's been eating. It does not look like it's starving. I don't know if it belongs to somebody. I mean, the only time I've ever seen it is in the middle of the night on the security camera footage. So this is the first time I'm actually seeing it with my own two eyes versus on a um, pre-recorded video. I don't know if it's a girl or a boy, so... The name Casper could be totally wrong, but... Um, that's fine, it's eating some food. I did put another small plate of food in the trap just to see if anyone would come back and eat. Um, I think uh, maybe like three or four of the kittens ate some of the food. I don't know where they went. I don't know where they've been going. I don't know. You know, I'm just putting food out to try to get them on a routine so I can try to get them spayed and neutered. Um, I ordered certificates for the spay and neuters uh, two days ago, and they've not arrived yet. I'm hoping that they arrive tomorrow or the next day, then I can make some appointments for next week. Even though we're supposed to get the rain from the hurricane in Florida, that's supposed to be here in a few days. So I might have to wait for the rain to pass. We're not supposed to get like a tropical storm or anything. We're just supposed to get a lot of rain from it. Anyway, this is the white cat that I've been seeing on the security camera footage. I don't think I've mentioned it in any of the previous videos, but now you see it also. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. It's 8 a.m. and the mornings are definitely getting colder and I have a plate of bait here. So basically this is um, maybe a third of a can of Trader Joe's turkey and giblets. I'm gonna put the trap out, I'm gonna put this in the trap and then I'm gonna get the rest of the food ready for the outside cast. So there's the trap with the food in it. It is not set. Um, this is just practice and what I found out this morning is that the traps I ordered the other day, they're not gonna be ready for like one to two weeks. It says they'll be shipping in one to two weeks approximately. And then the shipping time takes about three days. So I'm not really happy about that. I mean, I might potentially not get those for another three or four weeks. So yeah, this is not good. So Goldie walked past the trap to the side of the house and here's Ringo. Is Ringo gonna go in? Ringo's smelling the food. Is he gonna go in? Oh, there's Goldie there. Are they gonna go in? Are they gonna figure it out? They're smart cats, maybe they'll figure it out. It does not look like anyone used the shelter with the straw in it. Okay, there she goes. There she goes. Is she going to eat it? She doesn't trust it. Okay, so um, I'm going to leave that there for a little while. We'll see if they eat it. Um, I'm going to get the uh, inside cats taken care of, and then we'll be back. And then if they eat that, then I'll put more food out. So it's about five minutes later now. Ringo just went into the trap, smelled the food, came out of the trap, smelled the trap, and then now he's walking away. 
So I might have to use some pet remedy spray to attract the cats into the trap. Um, so the trap was outside yesterday, and then the only difference is it went into the garage. And it was in the garage overnight, and then I just took it back out. So I just looked out the window, and Nancy had her head in the trap. There's three cats, like, rubbing against this trap. Look at this. She's like, no, that's mine. I hope she eats it because she's skinny. She's one of the skinny ones. Her and Sammy are the skinniest right now. Look at this. So, they're warming up to it. Maybe if I put the plate closer to the door. Obviously, they're not starving because if they were starving, they would go in. Wow, little Eva just came flying through the patio. There's Richard. So yesterday afternoon, Richard ate out of the trap. Um, maybe he'll go eat from it. I don't know. Is he going to look at it? Is he going to smell it? Is he going to go in and eat it? He's like, what's that? Hmm. See? He went in. They might not like the food. There's no crunchies on it. I just put some of the canned food. There's little Eva. I think the two of them were playing. It's 8, 10 a.m. and I'm playing with the cats in the kitchen. Stella loves playing in the kitchen with this toy because of the way it slides around on the kitchen floor. And here's Splash, but look who's watching Splash. Look at this. You see Richard? Yeah, Richard came up to the door and he was watching Splash play. Is Splash gonna talk to him? You gonna talk to Richard? Hey Splash, there's Richard. Is anyone else out there? Splash likes to talk to the cats through the door. Someone's in the trap eating the food. I think it's one of the torties. It's hard to tell from here, but they push the plate all the way in. That's what happened yesterday when Richard ate in there. He ended up pushing the, the plate all the way in. So right now that would be a successful trap if the trap was set. So I am very hopeful that when I need to trap the first cat for the first appointment. Oh no, that's not a tortie. I think that's little Eva. There's Nancy. Nancy's walking around there. Yes, little Eva. Oh, look at that. Little Eva was in the trap eating the food. Good, because she's a small one. She needs to eat. Nancy needs to eat too. She's too thin. But they're not starving anymore, so that's good. Did she eat it all? I can't see because she pushed it. Yeah, it looks like she almost finished it all. It's 8.38 a.m. and I put two platters of food out. There's about four cats eating off those platters right now. I believe it's the two torties, uh, Nancy and little Eva. So it's the four girls, um, if those are indeed all girls. And they're getting the homemade raw food with some crunchies on top. And they go straight for the homemade raw food. They really, really love it, which is good. Um, so it's cheaper for me to make the homemade raw food that I give them than it is for me to buy cans of Friskies, for example. Um, you know, typical supermarket brand cat food. So that's good, and I'm glad they really like it. The only issue with making the homemade raw food is that it is a bit time-consuming, um, you know, between making it and then the cleanup itself. Um, so it, it easily takes more than an hour to make that. But if I only have to make it, like, twice a month, it's not that bad. Yesterday I made a smaller batch. They go through a pound of day if I only feed it to them for one meal. If I fed it to them for both meals, they'd be going through almost two pounds of food a day and it would only last a few days. But if they only get fed um, one meal a day raw and then one meal a day canned, then it would last about a week. Um, I don't know why I didn't buy more chicken than I bought. I usually make at least 15 pounds of food like at once. So next time um, I'll definitely go back to larger batches. 
but they really like it. It's the first thing they eat on these platters, and then they go back and they eat the dry food. It's about 12.30 p.m., and I just filled up the automatic feeder outside uh, with dry cat food, and I just reprogrammed it. I reset the time, so the time is actually now accurate. For some reason, it was 45 minutes slow. Um, now, um, the time is correct, and I set it to dispense one cup of dry food at 7 a.m., a cup of dry food at 10 a.m., a cup of dry food at 2 p.m., and a cup of dry food at 5 p.m. So that'll dispense four cups of dry food. Hopefully that'll be enough for the cats throughout the day. It should be. I mean, that's four cups is like more than a half cup per cat if it's feeding seven cats. So that should be fine. Um, I need this to feed them tomorrow because I'm going to be gone for the whole day tomorrow. I'm leaving tonight um, at night so they'll get dinner. I'll put out food for dinner. This is going to uh, go off at 2 p.m. today and also at 5 p.m. So they'll have dry food out of here. That way I'll know it's working. Um, and then tomorrow this is going to feed them and then hopefully I should be back tomorrow night. And then we'll be back on a normal schedule the day after that. So we'll see how it goes. I'm going to put this back on top. And um, I had three pavers. So I had one paver directly on the feeder. And then I had the wood on top of that. And then I had two more pavers on there. Because um, I think if I put the wood on here and then the two pavers, it might sink down. But maybe that's what I'll do. So I actually just put all three pavers on top. This wood seems pretty sturdy so far, so I think that'll be good. Hopefully the raccoons will not be able to move three of these pavers. I just put the table back and uh, hopefully this is all good to go. And look at what's going on here. I don't know if you could see it, but down here, it actually looks like there might have been a cat laying here, like all curled up because the straw definitely looks like it's been kind of pressed down in the front versus the back. So this is one of the vestibules for the cat shelter under the house and I wanted to show you the door of it. So there's the door and what I used for the door flaps on it is a quart size Ziploc bag and there are three thumbtacks on top to hold the Ziploc bag on there. And it worked really, really well. I think that bag's been on there for two seasons now. Um, it did not come off. It's fraying around the edges a little bit, but it definitely helped to keep some cold air out. Um, the cats had no problem going in and out uh, of this door with the door on it. So I'm gonna do something similar for the other doghouse shelter. So this one has a much larger door opening. And what I have here is the largest uh, Ziploc bag from the Dollar Tree. This is a 2.5 gallon Ziploc bag. It's kind of wrinkled right now. I just took it out of the box. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this here um, also with thumbtacks. And it should help uh, protect the inside from rain and potentially colder air at night also. If there were some cats in here and this door was here, it would definitely help keep their body heat in the shelter. So um, that's what I'm gonna do right now. So there's the clear door on the shelter and I have five thumbtacks going across the top. Obviously, um, air is still getting inside of it, you know, through the sides. Um, the cats can go in and out if they want to. I'm thinking of putting a slit down the middle um, to make it easier for them to go in and out. Um, if I do a slit down the middle, I could probably also attach the sides and uh, see how that goes. And remember, this is temporary. I could take it down and change it whenever I want to. Um, this is really just an experiment at this time. And there we have it. It's looking really cozy. It came out really nice. There's a little bit of gapping like on the sides but that's okay it's not meant to be perfect it's just meant to um, you know keep some heat in and uh, break some wind and keep some rain out and it'll definitely do that we have to remember the roof does overhang 
uh, by several inches, so that's good. And there is another door here on the back side, but it's much more sheltered because of where all the bushes are and everything, so, and I'm not gonna put a clear flap on it at this time. I should also mention that the reason why I'm not using duct tape for this is because when I've tried to use duct tape on doors in the past, it hasn't really held very well. It'll hold for a little while, but then it comes off, and then it just needs to be redone, but um, with the thumbtacks, it definitely works a lot better. It's about 1 p.m. Here's Simba, and I'm really excited because I just got the mail, and my certificates came from the rescue group. So I was able to call the local vet and make the first spay neuter appointment. I have to drop them off at 8 a.m. and they're supposed to be fasted for 12 hours before the surgery. So that means I am gonna try to trap one of them um, around dinner time the night before. And I have not figured out where I'm gonna put them yet. Um, if I'm gonna bring them into Boo's room, I have to check out what the weather's gonna be. Is it gonna be warm enough to um, keep them in the greenhouse or the garage? Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. I have four days to figure that out and I have a lot to do um, just with regards to other things that need to get done before that. It's 4.45 p.m. I just took a toy out of the garage and I think Richard will play with me. So here's Richard and let me tell you what was going on. Oh, here comes Nancy. The two of them have been all buddy buddy today here's Nancy so let me tell you what happened so I came out to check on the automatic feeder to make sure it was dispensing food and it was not dispensing food so I had to take all the pavers off and open it up and it had an error message it was F01 which is error message number one which I've had before and that means that um, there was like a jam oh look at this look at this they're playing um, so there was a jam and I had to take all the food out. And while I was taking the food out, Nancy came like walking right up there. So I gave her some food on the patio. And the next thing I know, Richard came out and the two of them were eating food there while I was um, fixing the automatic feeder here. It seems to be fixed because it did then dispense some food. So they've been um, kind of snacking on some food and I was taking care of some other things around the patio and Richard was watching me the whole time like he was really curious and interested. So I was like, okay, um, maybe he'll play with me. So I went in the garage and I found one of the toys that I had in the garage and I took it out and he was interested in it. Like maybe he knows how to play because you know he has brothers and sisters so maybe he knows how to play. So I'm gonna see if I could play with him. Look at this, look, look. He's coming toward it. He's not running, look, look, look. Sorry, sorry to hit you on the head. Oh my God, he's gonna play, look. I'm really excited because, oh, oh, oh no, oh no. He took the toy. Am I gonna be able to get it out? He's pulling it. All right, I got it back. I got it back. So he must really think it's a bird. What I was saying was that I'm really happy he's playing because Hydrox and Ditto didn't know how to play. There he is, he's back under the fence. He probably doesn't understand it's a toy and he thinks it's a real bird. See him? There's a bunch of bugs. There's all kinds of bugs flying around back here. I don't know how these cats deal with all these bugs. All right, so I'm coming back on the patio. There's too many bugs back there. He's smelling. You see him there? He blends in with the dirt. One thing I've realized is that tabby cats blend in with the dirt. That's why they're good hunters. Tabby cats blend in with dirt, so they're really good hunters. And black cats, black cats blend in with the night, so they're really good at, um, you know, prowling around at night. I just went inside to put a new battery in. 
the camera. There goes Ringo. I gotta hold this tight because he's gonna steal it again. See? He wants to take it. So they must have some kind of den or something back there. The way he ran off with it is exactly how like Stella, Splash, and Simba used to run off with their prey. Like if they killed a bird, that's exactly what they would do. They would run under the fence and take it wherever, wherever their home was. So I'm really curious to see where that is. But there's no way I could follow them. Ringo's, Ringo's watching from the back, you see him? He's getting scared. He's gonna pluck the feathers. He's a strong cat. You know, these cats have to be good hunters for them to be able to survive how they did. He's like, what is this? <laughs> Look how he's laying. I made sure I had a tight grip on it that time. Oh, is it, is it gonna come out and play? These bugs are driving me crazy. Get away, bugs. It broke, it broke. It broke. So it didn't break, it just unscrewed. This is one of those wands that like screws together in the middle. He thinks he's going to take it with him. Let's see if he follows me to the patio. Is he going to follow me here? He's walking in the grass.
Here comes Ziggy. Here comes Ziggy. She wants to know what's going on. She's growling. See her? Just saying, what's going on here? Little Eva's making her way over. You see Eva? You see her coming up? She's looking like, what's going on? I think I see another one in the background. Right now there's three kind of looking at the toy. Here she comes. There's five cats right now. The feeder just dispensed food. There's two in the back by the fence, and then there's these three here. I have Richard, Ziggy, and Eva, and then in the back is Ringo and Goldie. Oh, Sammy's in the back. I got six cats. Little Eva got big paws too. She's gonna be bigger.
I'm getting bit up by bugs. So there's Richard, there's Eva, she's eating some dry food. There's Ringo, and then there's Ziggy and Goldie, if I keep that name. And then, I don't know where Sammy went, but he was back there before.
There's Sammy. He reminds me of Boo, like afraid of everything. But probably a thug. That's Ringo behind Ziggy. Ringo's pretty. What a handsome boy you are, Ringo. And Ziggy's pretty too. They keep trying to run away with the bird. They've probably never seen this kind of toy before, ever. You see Sammy? There's Sammy. I think I have all seven cats here right now. There's Richard. There's Ziggy and Ringo. There's little Eva. And there's Goldie. And then there's Sammy. Well, that's six. We're missing Nancy. Where's Nancy? Where did Nancy go? <laughs> what are you guys up to? What are you guys doing? That's Miss Little Eva. Hello, Little Eva. She's the smallest one. She's smaller than Richard. Little Richard's small, but Little Eva's even smaller. She's like a torty tabby. Get out of her butt, Ringo. Ringo, get out of her butt. Look at the colors on little Eva's fur. She's like a, a classic tabby, but then she also has some of the torty colors on her. These are such pretty cats. I hope they can be socialized and I hope that they can find good homes. I really hope that can happen. Nope, not taking it. I need my little stool. I, I need something to like sit on. But if I move and go outside, these cats are not going to stay here.
So I'm trying to touch their paws with the wand because it's good initial contact. Right there, buddy. I would like to be able to pet them with the wand. Like, not poke them, but just pet them gently with the wand. If they let me, but, you know, that would be amazing progress just for one day. And here we go. He's biting it. Remember, when you're dealing with feral cats, they're not like inside cats that'll smell something first. A lot of times they'll just swat at it first and attack it. Remember, feral cats have never been touched by a human. So you don't want to you know, rush up to them and try to pet them, or you don't want to put your hands near where they might bite or swat. You want to keep a good distance. That's why using a stick like this. See, he's letting me pet him. He's letting me pet him with the stick. And also remember that I've been feeding these cats for weeks now. So it's not like these cats don't know me. They're actually waiting for their dinner right now. Trying to get it off you. Okay, there you go. Richard is definitely a male. Ringo is quite a bit bigger than Richard. There's a lot of gnats flying around Ziggy. He thought he was going to run away with it. That's not going to happen. I'm gonna try to swat some of the not the gnats away from her. I hope she's okay.
All right, guys, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to get some food for the cats because I'm supposed to be on a schedule today and I did not plan to spend 45 minutes playing, playing with the kittens. Okay, good job, guys. Good job. We'll play more next time, okay? It's 5.45 p.m. I put two platters of food out, and so far Richard and Ziggy have been eating. And I put a plate of raw chicken thigh meat in the trap. That's probably like a third of a thigh. I just want to see if they'll go in and eat it. Someone ate the other food to the empty plate. Um, that was Stella's leftover breakfast. So someone at some point went in there and ate it. So we'll see if they'll go in and eat the pieces of chicken thigh. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. It is 10.15 a.m. I slept in today and it's been raining all morning. And I looked outside and I saw some cats eating out of the feeder. So the automatic feeder has been working really good. Um, they've been eating out of it without any issues. Um, at night, it does attract more critters that try to eat the food. Um, but it looks like the feeding schedule that I had uh, programmed in the feeder was good. So it was a cup of food at 7 a.m., 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 5 p.m. And um, that looks like it's working out well because it doesn't leave a whole lot of food in the feeder for critters to get at night. Um, I got home probably around 10.30 p.m. last night, and I noticed uh, Richard was sitting near the feeding table so I ended up putting some more dry food out for him. I didn't want to put wet food out um, because it's stinkier and it'll attract more critters. So I put some dry food out and then a few more cats came out. So I ended up putting like a platter of dry food and another plate of dry food and they ate that. So they had a snack last night. And then this morning I looked at the security camera footage and they ate at the 7 a.m. feeding. They ate at the 10 a.m. feeding. And I just put two platters of wet food out and the second platter has some dry food on it. And it's just some cans of the wholehearted um, kitten pate, except it's actually left over from when Ditto was here because I was trying to get as much nutrition into him as possible and I wanted the most calorie dense food. So for a while I was feeding him kitten food. And uh, so that's why I have the leftover cans. I figure, let me put it out for these cats. Um, the plan for today is to start getting ready for Monday. Monday evening is trapping time. Um, the vet wants me to hold the cat in the trap overnight so that they're fasted. So the biggest issue I'm dealing with is rain because we're supposed to have like rain now through Tuesday or Wednesday. Hopefully it'll be like today where it's you know, not constantly raining and it's not a downpour. It's just like raining now and then. So we'll see what happens with that. The other thing that I noticed overnight on the security camera footage is that someone used the shelter with the straw in it. I don't know if they were actually in the shelter for a while. I just saw one of the torties come out of it. There's no footage of a cat going into the shelter. So it could be that they just like went into the back of the shelter and then ran out the front of the shelter. Um, yeah, there's no footage of cats going in and out. There's only footage of a cat coming out. So that's interesting. And I do have all of my insulation pieces that I need to insulate the shelter with, but I have to do that on a dry day. So I have to wait for the first dry day. Um, so yeah, so for the next three days, I have a lot of preparing to do. I have to get Boo's room prepared, which means I need to take need to take at least two pieces of furniture out of it um, to make room for the trap and so the cats have everything that they need like there's that um, piece of furniture with a litter box that has to come out so the other cats have an upstairs litter box and I need to make sure I have plenty of room in my car right now my car is a mess there's so much stuff in it because of um, all the things that have been going on so I have to uh, empty that out. I have I have a lot to do within the next three days. So anyway, the cats are fed and plan is in motion. 
It's 11.43 a.m. I just opened up my front door and saw this. So this has to be one of the trap kits um, because I didn't order anything that would be this big other than that. And when I spoke to them on the phone, they told me that I would get it on Monday. Today is Saturday, so it arrived early. I need to now go outside and take this around the house to the garage because it's just gonna continue to get rained on. So what I'm not very happy about is the fact that when this was delivered, no one bothered to ring the doorbell or even knock on the door or anything to let me know that it was here. They just dumped it on a rainy day because this was not here last night. They dumped it on a rainy day and they did not even let me know. I did not get an email, nothing, and this was FedEx. Here's Boo, he's hanging out in his room. I had a talk with Boo this morning about what's gonna be happening uh, with his room for a while, and I'm gonna have a few more talks with him before um, events start happening. I took the box around to the garage, so later today I'm gonna go out in the garage and open it up and make sure uh, it's what I ordered, and then I'll probably bring a few pieces inside here. Um, I could already bring in the cage and the connector, and uh, the trap I don't need to use because it will, the Cajun connector will connect to the current trap that I have. And I also just bought another one of the same one. So uh, we'll see how that goes. And Boo's gonna get ready. So this side of the room has been my work area and it's been working out wonderfully. It's been really nice. And I bring my laptop onto this desk and I work here and uh, right now, my laptop is still in my bag because I took it on my overnight trip and I was using it yesterday. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ottoman out of the room. That's what I did for Ditto. And I'm going to take this piece out of the room, this vinyl cabinet, and then like the stereo and uh, VCR and record player on top. I've been using these to digitize old vinyl and old uh, VHS tapes. And um, I'll just move these out. I have to figure out where those are going to go. So this space will be empty. I'm going to move this out. And then I'll have all the room under the desk and even like here to put the trap. Because it's a 36 inch trap. And then there's the connecting cage. So it should all fit under here. And when Ditto first came into this room, I had the larger recovery cage under the desk. And it was okay. Um, I covered the sides with like blankets and towels so he would feel safer. And I'm planning to do the same with the trap. And just put some sheets over it or something like that. Um, I just want to clear out enough room here to easily put the trap. And then if I needed to put another trap, I can then obviously put another trap here next to it parallel. Okay, boo. So I'm going to continue the conversation that you and I had earlier where I was telling you that we're gonna have to make room in here for other cats, okay? Because they're gonna have some operations, okay? They're gonna go to the doctor and they're gonna have an operation like you had. Boo, when you lived outside and someone put you in a trap and then they took you to have an operation, right? You were neutered. And that's what we're gonna do for the outside cats because they're young, they're kittens, and if we want them to have a good life and a good home someday, we're gonna have to make sure that they get spayed and neutered, right, Boo? Because that's what people want. If they adopt a cat, they want the cat to be spayed and neutered, right, Boo? You went through it, Stella went through it, Splash went through it, Simba went through it, all the cats, all the happy house cats went through it and you're happy now, right? So we have to help other cats, boo. We have to help other cats, okay? We have to help give them a better life and that's what we're gonna do, okay, boo? We are going to make some room in this room to help other cats. And I know you're really good at doing that, boo. You helped Ditto twice. You helped Ditto twice, boo. You let him have this room to recover from his injury. And then you let him have this room when he was very, very sick. 
And that was so nice of you, Boo. And I know you love your room and you're happy to have it back. And I know you love your day sofa and you love laying on it. But I know that you're also very concerned about the well-being of other cats. So that's what we're going to do, Boo, okay? It might be a few weeks. It might be a few months. You understand? I know you're not happy about that. I know. I know you're not happy about that. But we'll get through it, okay? We'll get through it. You'll get through it. Today is my day to change all the bedding on the bed from summer bedding to winter bedding. And this is what's going on. Simba has decided that he's just going to make himself as comfortable as possible. And that way I can't change any of the bedding yet. These are three of the automatic feeders that were set for the cats um, to feed them their meals yesterday and this morning. So they had breakfast and dinner yesterday out of the feeders and breakfast this morning. For some reason, the feeder on the left is one meal behind. I don't know why. Maybe it misfired for one of the meals. But notice how many crunchies are still in this feeder. So while I was away, their meals were supposed to be crunchies and some freeze-dried food on top. And it looks like they ate the freeze-dried food on top or most of it. You can see there's still some freeze-dried nuggets on the left. And they did not eat the crunchies, which is completely surprising because they usually really like crunchies. When I say crunchies, I mean dry cat food. This is the dry cat food that I put in the feeders. This is Stella and Chewy's freeze-dried raw coated kibble. Boo is smelling it. This is cage-free chicken recipe for cats, grain-free. And before I left, I gave each of the cats a little bit of this to try and they all ate it. So I thought, okay, well, they must like it. They ate some of it. I'll put it in their feeders because I was all out of the other crunchies that they've been eating and the brand that they've been eating has been discontinued. So I have to go buy them some other crunchies that I know they eat. So anyway, this is what I used in the feeders and as we could see, they refused to eat it. Uh, when I got home yesterday, here's Stella right now and here's Boo. So when I got home yesterday, the cats were really craving attention and usually they do that when they're hungry. And that's when I checked the feeders and saw that they did not really eat any of their food. So what I then had to do was open up a can of food and give them some of that along with a few other crunchies that they like better because they usually have some dry cat food as a nighttime snack. So it's really disappointing that they don't like these crunchies. I was very hopeful for these. This is what they look like. They are a dark brown color. They're actually quite small, which is nice. And the other thing that I liked about them is that they don't have a bad smell to them. Sometimes dry cat food it has almost like a chemical odor to it, which I'm not a fan of, but these don't have that. These smell kind of generic or kind of meaty, if that makes any sense. So that's why I was really hopeful for these, but the cats don't like them. But I'm definitely not wasting any of this food, so what I'm going to do is put it aside and I'll feed it to the outside cats, and hopefully they'll eat it also. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they refuse it too. So far, the outside cats have not been very fussy. They pretty much like anything that I put out for them. They're very thankful and appreciative to have any kind of food. It's about 4.30 p.m. right now. I just came outside to turn off the automatic feeder. Um, I see there's still some dry food in the bowl of the feeder from the last feeding. Um, the next feeding will go off at 5 p.m., but I don't want it to do that. Um, also, I noticed that the table has warped again. So one day of rain, and the table is warped again after I had it straightened out, but that's fine. The reason I'm shutting off the automatic feeder is because I don't want to attract uh, wildlife at night to come and eat out of the feeder. I just don't need issues with that. Um, I looked at the security camera last night and the fox um, did not come around last night, which is good. It did come around the night before, um, which I wasn't too happy with. It's not looking well at all. So the goal is just to try to keep the cats out of trouble. The other goal is to obviously control the food because in order for me to get one of them into a trap um, in a few days, um, I'm going to have to make sure that they're good and hungry. 
Okay, I just turned it off. It's really easy to do. I just have to put it on pause, which is what I did. And um, I took off the papers and the wood. And what I realized is I could probably put like a tarp over this or maybe some clear plastic. Um, I want to go to the Dollar Tree and get more of the clear shower curtain liners. Hopefully they still sell those. And maybe I'll just like wrap that up and that'll help it when the weather's wet and I was thinking of doing maybe something like that with the table maybe wrapping plastic around you know how you can kind of upholster things by putting fabric or plastic on and then wrapping it under and then like stapling it around that might help to um, keep water out of this top piece of wood even though that's deck paint that's deck paint on there so it should be pretty waterproof I just put fresh water in both of the water bowls out here and I have an audience, so here's Stella and Booze on the step, so they've been watching me. I'm in the garage and I just opened the box that arrived today. So the cardboard is mostly dried out, but it does become weaker after it's been wet. And I'm gonna take everything out. To me, this looks like it's two traps. This is not um, the pieces that I was hoping for. Oh no. So I was expecting this to be one whole set, which would have been a trap and then the, the two extension pieces, but it's not. It's just the two traps. I'm glad I opened it and I'm glad I didn't wait until Monday because now I need to figure out, I need to figure out a plan in case that other box does not get here when it's supposed to in two days, the day before the appointment, so... Ugh, not happy, not happy. This is one of the traps, I just took it out of the box and this bottom is a little bit bent. I could probably um, maybe hammer that back uh, into shape. I don't know if you could see it, but this bottom piece is like bulging out. I think if this gets hammered back in, then it should straighten everything out. So here are the traps. This is the one that I had. This is the one that I've used on Ditto before. Um, I, this is the one I bought for Hydrox and Ditto in case there were issues and I needed to bring them to a vet. These are the two new ones. Um, they're all identical, um, which is good. Um, so I have three and I can use them if I need to use them. Um, if I need to lend them to somebody, I could lend them to somebody. And if I don't need them anymore, I could always donate them to a local rescue group. So I figured I might as well have them. Originally, I was only going to get one other trap and then the accessories to go with the one that I have and then the other one. But buying the whole set ended up being cheaper um, than buying the individual pieces. So it ends up that I actually got this trap for about half the price that it would normally be. And I was like, all right, well, I'd rather spend the money on the trap than spend the money on shipping because these came with free shipping when you bought the set together. So it was basically just a bunch of calculations to see what was the best value. And these also came with these dividing forks. Um, so there's like one here and one I put in to this trap. I've been researching online and people say you want to use two of them because a cat, if he's strong enough or fast enough, might be able to get through one of them. But then other people say you just need to put it sideways instead of up and down. So I already had one and then I got two more. So now I have a total of three. So uh, these are used to keep uh, the cat in like one half of the trap. So you can open up the other half and clean it, change the water, do whatever you need to do. And the cat's not going to escape or, you know, get mad at you or anything. So yeah, the only other pieces I need are uh, the connector piece that attaches here. And then there's like another cage extension that you can put uh, a litter box in and it gives the cat more room. Another thing I wanted to do today was measure um, the litter boxes and the water and food bowls to see if they will fit. So this is a litter box um, that I bought when Ditto was inside. I was trying to find small litter boxes to put in his crate. This is one of the small ones. Um, this was not used. Or maybe he did use one and this is an extra one. But this one should be small enough to fit into the cage extension that comes with these um, that comes with these traps. See how perfectly it fits in this trap? Like the width is perfect, and the width of the attachment is supposed to be the same exact width. 
and the attachment is a little bit longer than this. So that's why I'm really hoping the attachments get here because the cat would have this entire trap, 36 inches, it's about 12 inches high. It's a decent amount of space. Then there'd be a few inches and then the litter would be here. So that would be, that would be a good setup. And I got this one from Petco. Maybe I'll go get another one. Um, just to have it. Um, obviously, width-wise, it doesn't fit. Otherwise, if I don't get the extension, people have been saying that they just use a uh, thick newspaper in the bottom, and then the cat will, like, tear up the newspaper and kind of use it like kitty litter. It's a lot messier to do it that way, so that's why I'm really hoping I get the extensions. And then these are not going to fit. I was hoping that these would fit, like, two across here, so, like, at the other end. I could put um, like water and food together and just kind of have these take up as little space as necessary. I mean, I guess I could always put them that way, but I don't need to. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the Dollar Tree and uh, see what they have as far as maybe little plastic containers that I could use instead of these bowls. Um, again, these are leftover from Ditto. It's 5 p.m. I was hoping I could finally change the bedding. And now there's two cats on the bed. I just brought one of the new traps inside so I can get a feel for the size of it. And it fits nicely under the desk, especially when I move out um, like um, that shelving unit and then this other piece to the left of it. So with the extension, it should, it should be good. There's Boo. Um, hopefully Boo will be okay. Right now with having the trap here, it might bring back bad memories for him, though. He's going to smell it. I also just got back from Petco, which had nothing, and the Dollar Tree. And I bought a bunch of stuff at the Dollar Tree. So they have this plastic container, which I thought could be a good size for a small litter box in the cage that attaches. And look at that. It's a perfect fit. So for a dollar twenty-five, uh, this should be a perfect fit for a litter box in the extension cage, and it's way cheaper than buying a kitten-sized litter box in Petco. And Petco did not even have any kitten-sized litter boxes today. And I was like, I don't really feel like running around in this horrible weather. So when I saw this in Dollar Tree and I measured it, I was like, Yeah, that could work, and it can work. I got one of their cheap litter scoops. This was the last one that they had there. Um, so I always like to have a fresh litter scoop. I don't like to use the litter scoops that I use for the other cats. Um, I like to keep a separate scoop. That's what I did when Ditto was inside. So that's why I got this. I figured I only need a light duty one. And then they had these ceramic bowls. They're like ceramic ramekins. Um, these ones say grateful. They had different designs for fall. And I measured these, and each one is a little bit less than five inches, so I'm hoping these will fit in a trap. And there we go. They are a perfect fit. So if I want to use these, I can use these. Um, I figured they're ceramic, so they're going to be heavier than plastic, and they're going to be harder for a cat to knock over and make a mess with. But they also had these plastic containers, and these have two compartments. So I figured I could put water on one side and food on the other side, and those are also a really good fit. But you can see that this container is a bit wider than these are, so I'm trying to find what can maximize the space in here. And they had these plastic containers, which I measured, and also those should be a good fit too. They're pretty much the same size as these ceramic ones, but they're plastic. I was thinking this would be good for water. Uh, maybe it's a little bit too deep for food. The bottoms of the ceramic ones are a little higher up. Uh, so these, even though... Even though they're a little bit taller, they seem like they're not as deep as these are. And I bought some of these shower curtain liners. I got the white. Uh, they had clear or white, so I got these. I'm thinking maybe I could even cut these down and put these on the floor underneath the trap um, just in case there's any uh, leakage from the trap. Like if a cat decides to, um, you know, use it as a litter box or um, dump over um, water or something. 
Um, I want to put something that's like water resistant underneath it. So I got um, three of these. They're $1.25 each. Everything at the Dollar Tree is $1.25. And then in their party section, I found these plastic bowls and then these smaller plastic bowls and these little plates. These are the smallest plastic plates they had in the entire store. And these are 5.75 inches. So I was thinking if I use one of these plates, I could use like a small bowl and that should fit. Look who wants to see what's going on. Stella wants to see what's going on. You gonna go in there? You gonna go in there, Stella? Nope. Stella's never been in a trap. I either have um, Splash or Simba. Here's Simba. They're like, what's going on? Simba gonna go in? Oh, Simba went under the day sofa. There's Simba. There's Stella. What you doing, Stella? They're smelling everything. This is not the trap that I've used um, with the cats outside. This is one of the brand new ones, so it's never had any of the other cats in it. I just brought another can of food out. So I put two platters of food out, uh, each with a can of food and some crunchies. And then I just opened another can of food. I split it between these two plates. And Ziggy was laying in here, right here. She's laying right here next to this um, shelter. This shelter is open. She can use it if she wants to. And this shelter looks a little bit different than it did before as far as all the straw in front of it and what's hanging out from the uh, the door. So I'm going to check the security camera later to see if anyone actually used this. So here's Ziggy right now. I think she might go and eat once I go inside. She reminds me so much of Splash and not just because of the uh, coloring on her face. She's just very much like Splash with uh, the way she's very skittish, like Splash is very skittish. And she has like a worried look on her face in her eyes. And Splash sometimes has that same worried look in his eyes. So she reminds me of Splash. And look what's going on here, it's Goldie. It's hard to see her, she's just hanging out there. Maybe she's gonna go eat too. I'm gonna go inside. Thank you for watching this Lucky Farrells video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos, and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.